simply call 888-870-8226. the 10th annual Southern Heritage Classic. Tonight, live from Memphis, Tennessee, it's the Tigers of Tennessee State taking on the Jackson State Tigers. Over 55,000 folks are expected to jam here in the Liberty Bowl to witness one of the most heated rivalries in black college football. Hello, everybody. I'm George Johnson. Yes, these two teams have been playing each other since 1949, and yet, despite the rich tradition, a little more spice to this ballgame. Both ranked in the top 20. Both with aspirations of winning a national title. Our broadcast partner is the former all-pro defensive end of the Washington Redskins, Charles Mann. Yeah, both teams are pretty good coming into this one, but it's still early in the season. And if they want to stay good, it's execution is what they need. They need execution, no miscues, no turnovers. That's the key to the game. And that'll win the football game. Yes, definitely. When you think about this now, Tennessee State's going to be coming into this ball game fresh off their first ever Ohio Valley Conference Championship. Mm -hmm. They have the OVC player of the year in Leon Murray, and man, can this guy play. Leon Murray, a great athlete, 6'3", 205, great size, former basketball player, if you will. He tested his off-season shoulder surgery that he had last uh, this off-season against Alabama State, where he completed over 50% of his passes and three touchdowns. Yes, this guy can definitely play. They like to throw the football, but the fact is they still want to establish a running game. Last year, they had two backs who rushed over 1,000 yards combined. This year, they haven't found that guy yet. This year, they're looking. They're looking around. They're trying to find a guy. It's almost running back by committee. There's three guys that they go to right now, and Durden, Jones, and Rob. And right now, one of these guys, Guys have to emerge. All of them run the ball extremely well, but you need one in there all the time. For the first time since 1992, the Tigers of Jackson State will be without James Carson. He had surgery in the offseason. Robert Hughes becomes the head coach. Boy, Robert Hughes knows this program, though. He's been here for 24 years, and he has some weapons. They call them the Big Three. I hate saying it, but this team <laughs> reminds me of the Dallas Cowboys. They also had the big three. First, you got to look at the quarterback, Mark Washington. Mark Washington, 23, uh, 26 touchdown passes last year. He throws the ball a little high, though, in his mechanics. He's a little shaky. The other guy, the guy he throws the ball to is wide receiver Sylvester Morris. And now Sylvester Morris had 17 touchdown catches last year. Just last week, four catches, 125 yards, and a touchdown. And the last but not least, Dextry Morris, De I mean Dextry Wright, the tailback, the senior tailback, He's the go-to guy. He had 1,528 yards last year rushing the ball. If you give it to him, you put it in his hands, he'll make it happen last week. He also showed he has soft hands, four catches, 80 yards. They've been playing this Southern Heritage Classic for nine years. Seven of those ball games have featured Tennessee State and Jackson State. The Tigers of Jackson State hold the edge. When we come back, we'll have the opening kickoff, starting lineup next on BET. Hey, Tom. Good morning. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much. Good morning, Tom. Good morning. Who are the hardest working people in the air? Ask the hardest working man on the air. Hey, this is Tom Joyner. Southwest Airlines, working hard to keep fares low. Join us October 2nd at the Cotton Bowl for the Southwest Airlines Al Lipscomb State Fair Classic. There's a lot more to working in AutoZone than looking up parts or ringing up sales. And it has to do with taking pride in taking care of customers. Like testing an old part before selling a new one. Or simply having what they need when they need it. In other words, it's about taking care of people who take care of cars. And that's what we do best at AutoZone. At Circuit City, you'll always get our low price guarantee. If you have any questions, I'm here to help. From software and hardware to printers, high-speed modems, memory, boom boxes, portable CD players, even mini-disc players, we'll help you pick out the perfect TV and screen size. 
Every one of Circuit City's camcorders comes with a guaranteed low price. We can arrange for delivery and installation, and we offer expert repair service. From helping you pick out the right product, to loading it into your car, or delivering it to your door, we want you to have the best shopping experience ever. Ma said to share these, and you can't count, so I'll divide them up, okay? One for you, and one for me. Two for you, and two for me. Three for you, and three for me. Four for you, and four for me. Okay, okay, we'll start over. One for you, and one for me. Today's Black College Football Classic is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. With fares so low, you have the freedom to go places. And by AutoZone, the more than 2,700 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. And by Nationwide, it's insurance and financial services on your side. Coming to you live from the Liberty Bowl, George Johnson along with Charles Mann as we're prepared to bring you two of the top teams in all of Division I AA in Tennessee State and Jackson State. And coming into this game, the officials, one would assume, would be on the side of Tennessee State. They're all from the Ohio <laughs> Valley Conference, although I don't want to put them in a hole already. Ernie Briggs, Casey Moreland, Steve Swift, Swift Ken Pack, Jeline Judge, Lee Midget, David Francis is the back judge, and the side judge is Bernie Jenkins. You know, I always tried to get those uh, referees on my side. <laughs> always nice them to death. You knew them personally. Oh, yeah. Taking a look at Leon these Murray two, there. as I said, have played since 1949. Leon Murray trying to loosen up that shoulder on the sidelines there. As I mentioned, he had off-season uh, shoulder surgery. There's your series. Jackson State leads 16 to 15. They've tied twice. And in fact, those two ties have come within the last 12 meetings of these two teams. JSU has won seven of the last eight. In fact, they've won four straight here at the Southern Heritage Classic. But last year, Tennessee State came away with the victory in that one. 33 to 21. So they're looking for something they haven't seen for quite some time. Huh. That's a winning streak. Yeah. Against Jackson State. Jackson State will kick the football off. Brian Reynolds set to kick off the junior. Back deep to receive the kick. Julius Hall. And also Avian Black. Black is free. Black's at the 45. Black runs over Reynolds and finds himself out by the 49-yard line. Fine return by Avion Black, the junior from Nashville. Yeah, he delivered a little bone there, too, to the guy, his would-be tackler. Great blocking ahead of him. Found that hole and he was gone. Yeah, he uh, watched this as he delivers the blow right there. That's the kicker trying to make that pretty nice tackle. He didn't, uh, he didn't duck. So now here comes the TSU offense. As you see Black coming back into the ball game. Boy, they line up already as if they're wide open. Three receivers split to the left for Mr. Leon Murray, the OVC Player of the Year, and they're very quickly going to attack with a short passing game, and Corey Sullivan makes the catch and works downfield about two yard lines. Starting lineups, the offensive line, they actually will start with the backfield. Leon Murray, as I said, the player of the year, completed 51% of his passes last year. Michael Durden will start at running back, though you'll see other guys. Donnell Brantley was actually the fourth running back, and he's been moved to fullback. Second down and nine. This time they go to dirt. Makes a move, gets knocked down at about the 45-yard line of Jackson State, and the late flag comes in. Right now, you see uh, Tennessee State trying to open up the game here. That's where they'll create some running lanes for Durden to run the football. The first set, they came out with four wide receivers. This one, they come out with three wide receivers. A look at the offensive line. Michael Thompson, Antoine McNutt, Ike Boone, Benny Anderson, and Lawrence Smith. Thompson and Anderson are All-American candidates. Ike Boone is a GTE academic All-American. We had two fouls. One was dead ball. The first one's 
not enough men on the line of scrimmage on the white. It'll go back to the previous spot. It'll be five-yard foul. For a second there, I think Tennessee State thought they were going to get the call. They were celebrating for a second. Here's the replay right here. They're trying to spread this Jackson State defense out so Durden to get some room to run the football. Pretty nice run right there. Coming up to make the pop, Brian Durden. So you might see Durden on Durden a couple of times in this ball game. Getting Durden with it, huh? <laughs> Getting Durden with it. Just underway here. Southern Heritage Classic. Looking at the defense, Eric Chandler. With a lot of experience on this defensive line, but the guy they really like is Andre Reed, the other defensive end. And linebacker Tommy Head last week had quite a game, 14 tackles. And look at this secondary. This secondary is very good. Rashard Anderson is the guy you keep your eyes on. The pros love this guy. He's already slated to play in the Blue-Gray Bowl. So here we are, first and 10. And Murray is going up top. And look at that fail and can't find his re receiver. Pass was intended for Sullivan. Good defense back there by Anderson, and I just talked did, about it. Did you, see what I, uh, did you see what I mentioned there in the open about throwing the ball a little high? Now, they're in the pro set this time. This, uh, they show multiple offensive sets. They're in a pro set right here. Now, Leon Murray had plenty of time, plenty of time to, to set up. Just rushed that, got a little excited right there, and throws that ball a little too high right there. And you talked about that exactly. Coach says, and that might be something the way he's holding the football. Second down and 10, reverse to Hall, trying to get outside. And once again, coming up to make the play is Anderson. Anderson, yeah. You know, if, if you're a pro's prospect like uh, Richard Anderson is, you got to be able to not only cover people, but you also got to be able to come up and make great tackles. And that was a nice tackle right there. Very sure. You know what happened there? A little misdirection to get Jackson State's defense running, but they played nice, disciplined defense right there. Single setback on third down and eight. That setback is Durden. Two tight ends set. Murray looking for room. Still on his feet. Looking downfield for his receiver. Oh, ho, ho, ho. and what a pop right there by Harold Wooten last year. Was one of the top players in the swag. Yeah, preseason defensive player of the year. And this guy, he's a big hitter, headhunter. You know what? If he would have been paying attention right there, he wanted that hit. But you know what? He could have gotten the interception. The ball was lofted up there. Watch this. He made a bead on the, uh, there you see, uh, Richard Anderson. Uh, now, see, he could have gotten that. He could have caught that. Pass was intended for Julius Hall. Coming up to make the pop, as we said, was Wooten. And he got flagged for that one. Unnecessary roughness. He could have had a turnover right there for his team. Sometimes you don't go for the big hit. You go for the big play. So Tennessee State threatening on their first drive. Inside the 25-yard line, first and 10. Murray looking sweet. Pitches it back to Rob. And that's Umara Rob, the junior. He also from the state of Tennessee, Gallatin. They, they like him. You know, he's, he's very quick, very agile, but I didn't see any blocking on that play right there. As soon as he got the pitch, there were, uh, you know, Jackson State defenders right there waiting on him. So here we go, second down. He still picked up two yards. Murray on second and eight, out pattern, completes it to Sullivan. And you got this feeling that he's going to be looking for the big guy, Sullivan, 6'3", 195-pound senior. You know, uh, you got to rotate your defensive players in here right now. You see Tennessee State going with a no huddle. That's part of this run and shoot look that they like to do. Everybody's standing around, milling around. They get the defensive, I mean, they get the offensive call. They get down. That's tough on a defense. So here we are, first and 10, ball on the 11-yard line. Quickly, they find the receiver, wide open Sullivan. Everyone in the stadium knew he was going to him, except Jackson State's defense. That's part of the no huddle. What happens in a no huddle is you get the defense trying to make substitutions, and there was no one there. Jackson State defense made a substitution, and forgot about Sullivan. That's the easiest touchdown catch Corey Sullivan will probably have all year long. 
in to attempt the point after, Seth Good Owens. And counting. So very quickly, Tennessee State comes out of the block and leads 7 0. 12 24 left on the clock. We'll have more on BET right after this. This is too many pictures. Girl, look at this mess. They're all mixed up. Honey, is it in one of the shoe boxes? Maybe they're in here. This is not organized. I gotta get this together. No. Here's a fish. This is a dead fish. Introducing Picture CD from Kodak and Intel. It keeps your new pictures organized. Plus, you can crop them, remove red eye, email, and even print them. Starting with your next roll of film, get a CD with your prints. This is ridiculous. We don't brush with toothpaste anymore. Why brush with toothpaste? Toothpaste? Forget about it. After all, your whole mouth needs protecting. Not just your teeth. But your gums and breath, too. What we need is a whole mouthpaste. Triple protection, Aquafresh does it all. Because it's three different toothpastes, all concentrated into one whole mouthpaste. For strong teeth. Healthy gums. And clean, fresh breath. We don't brush with toothpaste anymore. Now we brush with Aquafresh. It's the whole mouthpaste. Okay, we're gonna take a look at this uh, touchdown pass by Leon Murray to the wide open Corey Sullivan right there. And that was because of the no huddle. The hurry up offense catches the defense off balance and Corey Sullivan's gotta be feeling pretty good right now. There's LC Cole in his fourth season right in front of Corey Sullivan, the head coach of Tennessee State. Six plays that drive took, 51 yards it covered, and it took just two and a half minutes. And there's Cole we talked about, the head coach here at Tennessee State who has just amassed quite a career in terms of all the schools that he's been an assistant at. You know, uh, it took six plays, 51 yards. That, that took a little longer than they like to take. <laughs> like to strike a little quicker than that. Tory Thigpen receives the kick inside the 10, and immediately he's met on the return by Marvin Jones, number 30. <laughs> Thick pin is their all-purpose guy. As you take a look at the starting lineups, Mark Washington, 26 touchdown passes last year. Unbelievable. He has Destry right in the backfield along with Damian Ducksworth, Tory Thigpen, multi-dimensional, Sylvester Morris, and Daniel Guy, your receivers. Jeremaji Todd, I got to say it first. Yeah. Kevin Thomas, Philip <laughs> Turner, Fred Wynn, your offensive line. First and ten for Jackson State. Last year's record was seven and four. Ball is marked on the 13-yard line, single set behind him. You know that's Destry Wright. They're going double tight end set. And Washington immediately in the air, and hello. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Eric Joyce went after him. Went after him. The catch was made by Daniel Guy, but as Charles astutely <laughs> brought out, he got popped going after him right there. Oh, that's textbook. You roll the hips right there. You see that? You roll them hips. That's why most football players got, you know, big tushes, because they're rolling them <laughs> hips. They're used to rolling them hips on them. No gain on that one. Second down and 10. Washington with two receivers split to the right. Still has that single set by him. Looking downfield. And a good defensive play made there by Tennessee State's Legereus Jennings, the junior. Mark Washington has to really plant that foot. I was talking about the mechanics in the open. He's got to plant that foot and get that ball out there. Your defensive line, Larry Floyd, Danny Roberson, Manny Robles, Dotson and Stevens, but the story are the middle guys. Holland and Sterling are your linebackers. Brent is a good player. Legereus Jennings, you just saw, Ed Sanders is a top-notch player in the secondary along with Jamie Watkins and Eric Joyce. Third down and 10. Tennessee State showed blitz and then backed up off of it. Single set. And Washington made a pump move, throws downfield, and flags all over the place. You know, uh, you, you mentioned the starting lineup on uh, Tennessee's defense. And Tennessee's defense are starting Orlando Dotson at defensive tackle, nose guard Manny Robles, and the other defensive tackle, Danny Roberson. All three of those guys are young guys, and they're replacing Grayson and Graham, who were disciplined last week because they didn't play very well. Holding 
was charged against Tennessee State. And so they'll move the chains. And one would assume that Jackson State gets new life on this drive. You know, you don't mind that kind of a play early in the game. You know, everybody's trying to get into the flow of the game. Quarterback holds the ball that long. You're supposed to plaster the receivers. Plastering them don't mean hold them, though. <laughs> but plaster them. Yes. Mark Washington, who, as we've said before, threw for 26 touchdowns. There's L.C. Cole, the head coach of Tennessee State. And Washington, the quarterback for Jackson State. 26 touchdowns. That breaks Graylin Pratt's record of 22, established back in 1996. Looks like he's audible and at the line of scrimmage, Mark Washington there. First and 10. Ball is at the 23-yard line. Our first look at Destry Wright, and Wright makes the move inside. He's tackled by Manny Robles, the 17-year-old yeah. freshman. And he got he moved down the line of scrimmage. Now, this guy is a load. He's a big guy, 6'1", 270 pounds, low center of gravity. You got to be able to move laterally, side to side. He did a great job there. But Wright on the carry picks up four yards, so that'll make it second down in six. I formation behind Washington. Gives it to the deep back right. Oh. Right makes a move. Finally dragged down, but not before he picks up a first down. Ed Sanders came up and made the tackle. Now, if I was Jeffrey Wright right there, I'd go up to Damian Ducksworth and pat him on the back. He makes a great block right here. Running ahead right there. He cleared the way when a linebacker was coming. And Destry Wright, all he had to do was run the football. Wright, who rushed for 1,528 yards last year. He's a senior from Clarksdale, Mississippi. Gives his team a first down. Ball's marked at the 38-yard line. 10-45 and counting on the clock. Play action, Washington downfield. You may get another flag. There was a whole lot of. Oh bumping. my God! You may get another flag, and you do. Eric Joyce. Eric Joyce grabbed his hand and tried to slow him up a little bit. I don't know why he did that. The ball was uncatchable. It looked like. But because of that, that's the second penalty charged against the secondary of Tennessee State on this drive. And it's allowing Jackson State to move the ball downfield. So he grabbed his hand right before it came into the pitcher. He grabbed his hand. There was no need to grab him. Jamie Watkins was all over the receiver. Daniel Guy was your intended receiver. But another penalty charged for Tennessee State. Daniel Guy is uh, playing in front of his hometown crowd. From Memphis. Ball shy of midfield at the 48-yard line. Slot receiver, shot back, uh, shotgun formation, excuse me. And great pressure by Tennessee State in that instance, and Washington had to get rid of the football. They sent their, sent their middle linebacker, Brent Sterling, and we talked to the uh, information, our athletic uh, information director, they were talking about Brent Sterling just gets the job done. He's not a big hoorah guy. He just is always there, plays week, uh, week in and week out. Watch him come right up the middle here and put a nice little lick on Mark Washington. Pass was intended for Melvin Greenwood, so now it's second down and 10. Little reverse. Now they're going to throw the football wide open receiver. Oh, and he's overthrows his intended oh. receiver. Man. Great misdirection play. Lawrence Story, the southpaw, had a chance to throw a touchdown pass to Sylvester Morris and couldn't complete it. Now, this was zone coverage. Now, you see Sylvester Morris running across the zone. I don't know where the cornerback was on that side, but he got passed off. Eric Joyce, again, should have been there. Just a great play. When you've got a guy like Destry Wright, though, you always have to think if the ball is anywhere near him, you've got the key on him. So those kind of misdirection things yeah. really work. Eric Joyce uh, needs to get into this game. He's made a couple of errors already. Third down.
and ten. Washington got time over the middle, finds his receiver. And once again, Sylvester Morris gets wide open for a first down catch. How does he do it? Well, you know, that uh, that defensive line of uh, Tennessee didn't put any pressure right there. See Danny Roberson right there getting double teamed. Nice pocket right there. That is the way it should be. That was 17 yards right there on that reception for Morris. Receives the ball at the 36-yard line, make it the 35. As you can see, 10 minutes left here in the first quarter. Tennessee State marched right downfield on their first drive to score. Jackson State's trying to answer. Inside handoff, nothing doing. This Tennessee State was all over that one defensively. You got you to gotta keep your fullback happy. Damian Ducksworth, you know, he's, he's going to get a couple of carries, and uh, they need to do a little blocking for him. He's normally the one doing the blocking, so uh, he can't block for himself and run the football. Curly Grayson, one of the players, in on the tackle with that one. The first there, though, was Terrence Guyton. And it's interesting, we're now saying Grayson and Guyton. Those are the guys that lost their job, and already they're back on the field. Well, <laughs> you got Jackson State driving. They better get out there. Here we go. Second down and 11. Oh, oh Washington, wide open. Touchdown, Jackson State. Daniel Guy. Daniel Guy getting it for the hometown. Getting it for the hometown. 36-yard touchdown pass play from Washington to Daniel Guy. And I don't, I do not know why he was so wide open. That is, uh, let's look at the replay here. Once again, great time in the pocket. Single coverage right there, and Jennings wasn't around. I don't know, I don't know what happened there, but. Uh, Brian Reynolds in to attempt the point after. Kick is up and the kick is good. So how about the explosive offenses early on in this ball game? Is there any D, Charles? <laughs> I'm, I'm questioning that right now. <laughs> 908 left. More right after this. B-E-T. Black Star Power. I just bought a GMC Jimmy from Capital, and I really like the way you treated me. Thanks for the compliment. And now I'm looking for a Pontiac. Capital has great model closeout deals. Big rebates, low interest rates. Or low, low monthly lease payments. And games? Never. At Capital, we never have any hidden charges or high pressure. You have my word. Come see us, Route 60 Powhatan and Laburnum near the airport. Capital Pontiac GMC. Where you always get a doggone great deal because we care. Her spirit and beauty symbolize pride, hope, and courage for women of today. Community Pride presents the 1999 Sister for Sister Conference, a weekend of empowering workshops and inspirational speakers, featuring Patricia Russell McLeod, Farai Shadea, and the Reverend Barbara King. Plus, in concert, Jonathan Butler, Renee Crone, and Mzawa Dance Company. Also enjoy a movie screening and gospel concert. Community Pride presents the 1999 Sister for Sister Conference, September 17th through the 19th. Sure. Jackson State 10 plays, 87 yards, and they made it happen with this play right here. I, I tell you what, somebody, them corners better get on their jobs. Legarius Jennings and Eric Joyce, they are responsible for that drive. They kept it alive. Again, we're talking about Mark Washington, who threw right. 26 touchdown passes right. last year. Right. He is no slouch. He can't make it happen. But we're tied up at seven apiece. Tennessee State's turn to take a shot. And immediately, they come right back with the return. Runner is still on his feet over midfield. And a nice little return for Tennessee State right there to put themselves back in Tiger territory. That's Jackson you, State Tiger territory. If, if I was Brian Reynolds, the kicker, I'd be all over those guys. Why does this is two kickoff uh, returns, and he has to make both tackles. And a kicker would go a whole season without making two tackles. <laughs> Avion Black has been the man who's been putting them in great field position, too. 7-7 seven, seven is your score. Here's Rob. Up the middle, big yardage, down to about the 30-yard line. Who 
Kamara Rob. In his first year with the Tigers, and making a big impression with his offense already. 16-yard carry for Rob. They like him. They really like him. He adds an excitement and an explosiveness to their offense. First and 10 over the middle. And another fine play and a catch down low. Boy, these guys don't waste much time, Tennessee State. They got that one to David Jones, the tight end. He is really not a tight end. I mean, he's 6'3", 205 pounds. He's a receiver. And he's matched up there against Wooten, Harold Wooten. He ran that seam route. Still going no huddle. That one good for 24 yards. First and goal. Ball's on the sixth. Third play of this drive. It didn't take long. It didn't take long. Touchdown, Caron Key. Wow. Three plays. I tell you what, these teams are very exciting. You know, being a former defensive player, you know, I'd like to see a little bit of D every now and then. <laughs> yeah, good luck today. Yeah. The big guy. The big guy. Yeah. Carol, who last week came up with some big special teams plays, returned a block punt for a touchdown, gives the Tigers the lead. Good Owens converts on the point after, and they are up 14 to 7. 826 left in the first quarter. That's right, folks. Sit back. This is going to be a wild one. Picture this. An insurance company with a vision to make life's challenges easier to handle. Nationwide is an equal housing opportunity insurer. We offer home, auto, life insurance, and financial services to protect those things you value. If you can picture it, so can we. Nationwide, insurance, financial services on your side. Ah, the stovetop canister. Let you make a little stuffing or a lot. Whether it's a platter of pork chops or a romantic dinner for two, say meatloaf or turkey. Oh. Dress up dinner tonight with stovetop. On September 17th. I'm pitching tomorrow night. I want you to come. You are such a guy. Kevin Costner, Kelly Preston, for Love of the Game. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday at theaters everywhere. Presenting the most convenient way to pay for gas. Mobile Speed Pass. Just wave this key tag in front of the pump once, and it automatically builds a credit or check card that you already have. Speed Pass is convenient, free, and only at mobile. There's no pulling money or cards out of your wallet. Speed Pass. Because there are some things you don't want to miss. Call toll-free 1-877-MY-MOBILE. All right, now check this out. Little play action right there. Fake it to your running back and then throw it to your fullback. Wide open. The wide receiver runs the defensive back off. It don't get no easier than that. Shoot, George, you could have ran that in. Yeah, uh, let's. I, I'll question that one. <laughs> well, you'd have, to, you'd have to catch it first. <laughs> Key with the touchdown. And L.C. Cole says, how, I mean, how much quicker can we do this? It took us just 29 seconds to get the football 47 yards downfield and to take a lead. So good old wins, kicks off. Big pin is back deep. Takes the ball at the 10-yard line, looking to get outside, and runs into his own man. Big pin was looking for an opening and could not get open, and Marvin Jones took advantage of the gap. Well, Keith Williams was blocking for him on that play, and Keith Williams couldn't move his blocker out of the way, or this would-be tackler out of the way. You got to get out of the way. Torrey was just about ready to pick up some speed, so now... Mark Washington going to try to turn things around for Jackson State. Get them back into it. They go with a double tight end set. Right as your own set back. They give it to Wright. Bounces off a couple of 
tacklers finally dragged down by Marcus Stevens, if not until he picks up a good seven yards. If I was Jackson State, I would be running Destry right as much as I could. You want to take up some of this game, man. You want to keep the ball out of Tennessee State's offense. And yet here they are speeding it up already. Back in formation. The double tight end set. Harris goes in motion. They get it to Harris, trying to get to the outside, making a move. He's finally taken out of bounds by Ed Sanders, but not before he picks up the first down. Courtney Harris with carry. That's a nice little play. I like that, going in motion. You don't think he's gonna get the ball all of a sudden right when he gets over the center. That's timing, you gotta have great timing to run that play. You wanna get Harris to the outside, considering he has 4-3 speed. <laughs> yep. Create mismatches. Was stopped as he went out of bounds. Ball is marked at the 38 yard line. Nine yard carry for Harris. 7.41 left here in the first quarter, folks. It's already 14 7. It has been exciting already. Here's Wright off the pitch, cut back, and he gets another first down. And another flag is thrown also. You got to put the ball in Destry Wright's hands. Look at this. Coming right at the screen here. Look at nice blocking. Great cutback. Good vision for a running back. Very good vision. That's what they're looking for in the pros. 14-yard pickup. And then they're going to tag five more. First down. The dreaded face mask. You know, you want to get them down with whatever it takes first. But you want to leave the face mask alone. Especially when you got a freight train like that coming your way. Like right, that offensive coordinator there saying something stinks. <laughs> one of doing one of the signals in there. They're relaying the signals in. You can see both teams are running no huddle. Mark Washington is trying to get relay the signal to everybody. Calling the play at the line of scrimmage. Balls at the 42-yard line. Washington with the fake pitch, looking downfield for his wide receiver, who, oh, he was wide open. He had gotten past the defensive back Eric Joyce, but the ball was underthrown, and Joyce was able to make the play. I, 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 I hate harping on something. I want to talk about mechanics again of Mark Washington. I mean, you got to get that ball down there. The guy's wide open. Eric Joyce has already been burnt. And look at this. Daniel Guy just flying down the field. My goodness, throw the ball, overthrow him if anything, but throw the football. So that'll make it second down and 10. Ball spotted, 42. I formation behind Jackson State. In motion, Morris, they go to the outside and a good defensive play made by Larry Floyd. Very nice. He's he's considered a defensive end. He's only six feet tall, 225, and Floyd right there. Great athleticism on the corner. You, hey, you had to do something special to get by him on the corner there. It's Great tackle. They call some of these guys defensive ends, but they actually look like linebackers. Yeah, defensive yeah. end slash linebacker. Minus six yards on that carry. Makes it third down and 16. Receivers split to the right of Washington. Single setback. Throws the out pattern, completes the pass to his wide receiver, Sylvester Morris. But Morris is going to be shy of a first down, it looks like. That was much better uh, mechanics, body mechanics by Mark Washington as he threw that out play. Earlier in the game, he threw an out that looked like it could have been intercepted. When you're throwing that out now, you got to have a lot of confidence in your wide receiver. Watch how he sets up right here. Gets that foot planted and moves forward. That's a great throw right there. Well, I'm sure he has a lot of confidence in Sylvester Morris. After all, he goes to him time in and time out. They've all been is, working together for now a couple of years. All he has to do is throw the ball in Morris's area, anywhere. Big guy like that. It reminds me of Michael Westbrook with the Washington Redskins. Big old strong looking guy. So they'll measure. And that's 
The mere fact that they have to measure shows that Morris is a veteran. He got enough yards to get close to that first down on that out pattern. A lot of younger guys wouldn't have gone down that far. Well, and, you know, he's such, he has such a long body, though, also. If you can just fall forward, a lot of times you'll get that first down. This one's going to be short, though. I wonder this, you know, <laughs> I wonder do they have uh, Jackson State have some kind of short yardage offense? <laughs> you know, these guys are so high-powered, run-and-shoot kind of a thing. Absolutely. They have Destry right, though, so they have the short yardage. 215 uh, pounds, yeah. yeah. Destry can get it done. And yet you're also thinking they do not want to put the ball back in the hands of Tennessee State, who has marched down the field on both their possessions for touchdown. Well, this is a nice little series right here, though, for Jackson State. They're keeping the ball out of Tennessee State's hands by just moving it methodically down the field, Destry right, getting some balls, you know, a little misdirection. Well, you see this double tight end set. Seems like there's a lot of mix-up going on at the line of scrimmage. They can't hear the quarterback. I don't know if it's too loud. Fourth down and in inches. We'll say one yard for a first. They give it to the up back, and the full back powers his way for about six yards and a first down. Ball given to William Spencer. Drag down. I wasn't sure where the ball went to right there. Nice play right there. Nice fake by Mark Washington. And William Spencer just drove. He's 245 pounds, so he was dragging a couple of refrigerators on his back. Spencer transfer from Syracuse. First and 10, ball inside the 30. Still here in the first corner. Jackson State trails 14 to 7. But they have moved the ball downfield. Washington. Oh. With the shot. Oh. And the receiver. Daniel Guy Daniel. come up with the catch. Oh, my goodness. But boy, did Washington that, zip that one. That could have been the second touchdown catch of the day. He's from Memphis. He's at the home at home. Wide open, running a seam route right here, just straight down the middle. When Tennessee State, Tennessee State was running a zone coverage, the best play for a zone coverage team is the seam, just straight down the seam. The hash marks. Second and ten. Single set back, two receivers split to the right. Washington, inside handoff, right, right, dances a little bit, gets away from a couple of would-be tacklers. Curly Grayson comes in and puts the finishing touches in on the tackle, but not before Wright picks up about four yards. I tell you what, he, he's your bread and butter. He's got to be your bread and butter. As much as you can go to him, you got to go to him. Look at Grayson in there. Grayson didn't get the start today because uh, defensive line coach was a little upset with his play last week. Third and seven. He picked up three on the carry. Washington, quick out pattern, finds his receiver, and a good little pop there by Eric Joyce. Lawrence Story made the catch, but he may be short of the first down because of that pop. Yeah, uh, Lawrence is 6'6", 190 pounds. Now I'm 6'6", and I, you know, I weigh about 255 on a good day. He's 190 pounds, so he's very light. As Eric Watch Joyce this. found out. Nice, nice little quick, little, little quick out. You know, we used to run that in the sand lot. A little quick out. Mark Washington got the ball there. He planted his feet. Nice. Play picked up about six yards. Eric Joyce delivered a little blow. Fourth down and one yard to go. Quarterback Key. Try to sneak that thing up for the first down. And he gets the first down. Washington with the carry. So they keep the drive going as we approach the five-minute mark here in the first quarter. Your nose guard. Now, Tennessee's defense, they run a, they have a nose guard. Terrence Guyton was in there. You got to be aware of, you know, quarterback sneak with four inches to go. Washington, he's a senior from San Antonio, Texas, the quarterback. And they look like they're going power eye now in the backfield. Duckworth in motion. They go the other way to right. And Wright finds no room right there. Orlando Dotson was waiting for him and was the first player to make the hit. Got some help after that. That was an interesting little set there. 
little uh, little power eye. Look like a little wing, a little wing T. <laughs> well, you, you you look at the stats and you think this is a wide open throwing offense. But right. When I talked to Coach Hughes earlier this week, he said, "Listen, we're going to do a little bit of everything: two back, three back, four receivers, five receivers. Mix things up." We and have we have seen a lot of different variety of sets. Second down and ten. Now they go single set back with two receivers split to the left. Washington saw the blitz and came back up the middle. Watkins made the tackle. Also went on that, Gar Holland. That was the right thing to do. Mark Washington, you know, you can't help yourself in that situation. He saw the, the blitz was coming. If he would have reached back to throw the ball, he probably got his hand knocked and, you know, Watch this. He sees it coming. It's too late. Grab the ball and just go down. You figure you'd rather eat two yards than seven or eight. As a coach, I'm never upset with something like that. You know, just don't turn the ball over. Third down and 12. Washington back at that line of scrimmage, checking off. Receivers do a little crossing pattern. Thigpen makes the catch and tries to drive the defender backwards, but Jennings, good defensive play, makes the tackle and a secure one. <laughs> Those referees better blow that whistle. They're going to have a little fight going there. No, not a fight, will we? Yeah. <laughs> Check this out here. Thigpen, they're all-purpose receiver, kickoff returner. He can do it all. Jennings makes a nice, nice tech textbook tackle right there. Thigpen caught 22 passes last year for close to 400 yards. Coach L.C. Cole says he's the one guy I'm most concerned about. He can hurt me in so many different ways. Fourth down. They were going for that now. Morris I, in the end zone. I don't know. I don't know about that call. I don't want to. You know. I don't want to question uh, Coach Hughes. But come on, I get the three points. You know, they walk away with nothing now. He may be thinking, I got to keep pace with Tennessee State the way they've been moving the ball. Now this is, uh, you know, this is your fade, and you normally throw that to your big receiver like Ter uh, uh, like Morris right there. The Jarius Jennings there with the defense as Mark Washington's club comes up empty. And for the first time all evening, a drive comes up with no points. That's kind of rare in this ball game. I hope it doesn't come back and bite them. We'll take a break. We're live from the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee, where Jackson State trails Tennessee State by seven. This classic last year, 55,000 plus. The year before that, they had over 61,000 folks here. This is obviously a big event down here in Memphis, Tennessee. And from the looks of things, Charles, they're going to be close to another 55,000 folks. They're starting the wave, in fact. It's the 10th annual, so this has uh, become a tradition here in Memphis, Tennessee. So has the matchup between Tennessee State and Jackson State here. In fact, Jackson State had won four straight, but last year, Tennessee State got the win. And you talked to Coach Elsie Cole, he said, that victory last year kind of gave us some confidence, turned our season around. Absolutely. Here they are, first and 10, deep in their own territory, starting at their 11-yard line, and immediately they give it to their Marvin tailback, Jones. Marvin Jones. Yeah. <laughs> it started off with a run. Can you believe it? <laughs> Well, they figure now we've got the advantage. Let's start to work on this clock, I would assume, a little bit. I don't know if that's a concern of L.C. Cole's. <laughs> I don't. I think he likes exciting football, airing it out. Four-yard carry for Jones, who rushed for 88 last week against Alabama State. Second down and six. Murray lobbing. Catch. Oh, Corey Sullivan. He's just been schooling those. Wow, he just threw that ball up there and said, go get it. Threw the ball up, go get it. And Corey Sullivan comes down with a nice reception. Remember, he's already got the touchdown earlier. That graphic, uh, he, he does have a touchdown. And how about Leon Murray, who's completed four or five passes already? That one good for 23 yards. And that's against Richard Anderson. Richard Anderson's a pretty good ball player now. First and 10. Ball is at the 37. Little fake, wide open field. Murray on the run, looking downfield, and it was underthrown. But a nice play intercepted. Oh no! Pretty good play by 
wide receiver to get back there and knock that ball down. I tell you what, I don't know if the receiver knocked it down. I think it was Rashard Anderson knocked it up in the air, and then Kenny Bryant almost got it. I don't know if he crossed the line of scrimmage. Did he cross the line of scrimmage? No, he was all right. Look at this ball. It's up for grabs. Rashard Anderson almost catches it. Wooten goes by. And then watch Kenny Bryant almost with a spectacular, oh, my goodness. It was interesting because Murray had a lot of real estate in front of him when he, he was, rolled out and could have picked up some yardage, some substantial yardage on a carry. This time he gives it to his tailback, Jones. And you talked about running back by committee. Yeah. We have now seen our third tailback in the ball game for Tennessee State. Right. And you never really get into a groove. You know what I'm saying? The running backs, as soon as they get a little sweat going and start feeling good about themselves, they get yanked. Right. You, you can't win. There he goes. <laughs> Another running back. Jones picks up two yards on that carry. Like you said, five rushes, 88 yards last that was week. Last week, absolutely. Second down and eight. Dump out to Durden, who's coming to the game. Durden tries to cut back inside. And a pretty good play made hmm. by the defensive tackle. Tony Rogers. Jackson State. Rogers, who <laughs> came off the bench in this ball game and made a good play there. That's a load right there. 6'4, 330 pounds. <laughs> You say as you <laughs> let out some air. Yeah, man. I just remember, remember all those days. I was going against some big old guys. <laughs> he made a good play to get that runner to turn it you, back up. There, there they go, switching backs again. Dirt is out. So now they, back to They punt. put the big boy in their key. Ashley Johnson is actually going to punt the football back to oh. Thigpen. Thigpen makes the catch at the 23-yard oh, line. Oh, oh. Looking for some blocks. Finally gets it out to the 30-yard line. That's the first punt of the game, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. Wow, we don't want to start a trend like that and start punting the ball. Danny Roberson makes the tackle. So with just one second left here in the first quarter, we have had plenty of action. There's only one quarter went by. <laughs> That's it. My goodness. <laughs> Jackson State trailing by seven. Here's Mark Washington. Guy who went in motion heads downfield, but he looks the other oh, way. What a my. Catch, mate. Oh, my. Oh, oh. Folks, you're oh. starting to see why they love Sylvester Morris at the next level. He got a little, got a little swagger to his walk after he got up after that. You make a catch like that, good for 28 yards, you'd swagger too. We're moving to the second quarter. Tennessee State jumped out on top and still holding on to the lead. They're up by seven over Jackson State. We'll be back at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis for second quarter action right after this. the irresistible taste that makes you say, did somebody say McDonald's? Getting ready to start the second quarter here where Tennessee State has a lead over Jackson State by the score of 14 to seven. There's L.C. Cole, whose team started out one and two last year. The one victory was against Jackson State, but then they won eight straight. You take a look at the stats, first downs belonging to Jackson State. These state, these, in fact, these stats are brought to you by Nationwide. It's insurance and financial services on your side. Now we take a look and we see that Jackson State has more first downs. Passing yards goes to Tennessee State. <laughs> yeah. You know, they don't care about first downs. They don't care about time of possession. Uh, Jackson State is winning in almost every category, and yet they're losing the ball game. So, you know, the, the stat that really matters right here is points on the board. Those are Nationwide's first quarter stats brought to you by Nationwide. It's insurance and financial services on your side. They get ready to start partying in here. Start? <laughs> They've been partying. Well, the football team's fact, already been partying. When you and I drove up, they were partying. <laughs> Took us two hours to get in the place. <laughs> here we go, start of the second quarter. Washington gives it to Wright. Wright 
bounces up the middle, finally brought down by the linebacker, Brent Sterling. If you can get seven yards on first down, why wouldn't you do that every time? You want to mix things up. Six yards, still. I mean, you know, man. You'll you take the six, huh? I'll tell you, you got to, that's your bread and butter right there. You got to run the football. Second down, four yards to go. Single setback is Destry right again. As you can see, all that beef up on the offensive line. Wright slipped a little bit and still was able to pick up a yard on the carry. They got those young guns in again uh, for Tennessee State's defense. There you see uh, Danny Roberson helping his partner up uh, and his roommate, Orlando Dotson. They did a good job right here of defeating the offensive lineman at the point of attack. Jackson State's offensive line got to get a push. And there's Destry. Look at his numbers. Last year against Alabama State, he rushed for 252 yards. So he has the capability to put huge numbers on the board. It's hard to do that when you don't get the ball in your hands, so. though. High formation. This time they give it to the up back, Damian Ducksworth. And he picks up maybe a yard. With that carry, now we have a fourth down situation. And the last time Jackson <laughs> State was faced with that, they tried a little law pass in yeah. the end zone. And, and they're going for it again right here. There's no punter in there. No Kenny Page, the senior, still on the sideline. Kenny B, the punter. Split back formation behind Washington. He's looking quickly out for his big time receiver and finds him. Sylvester Morris makes yet another catch. Jennings could have probably picked that off if he would have went for it. As you look at it on the replay right here, now Mark kind of hesitates when he lets his ball go. Jennings was in, he, all he had to do was step in front of it. Watch this. Step, he makes a good plan, step in front. Coach, I mean, he's, he's so concerned about, and I don't blame him with Sylvester Morris, the way he can explode on you. He's got four receptions already for 66 yards. 12.45 and counting here in the second quarter. Oh! Great defensive pressure right there. Coming in to make the sack is Curly Grayson. He says, yeah. no, coach, I still can play. That's right. That's right. As we mentioned earlier, he did not start. He did not start, and he is from Memphis, too. So his hometown people are like, well, why aren't you starting? Again, credit. Tennessee State with great pressure. They said that was a concern of theirs last right. week in the victory against Alabama State, and yet they have come up with some great plays, blitzing, disguising some things, and making it tough for Mark Washington, who now finds himself in a second down and long situation. 15 yards for a first down. Eye formation again, and Washington doesn't like what he sees. And we'll take a timeout as well with 11.55 left here in the first half. More football action coming your way from Memphis on BET next. To the Liberty Bowl here in Memphis. With TSU and JSU's bands just starting to warm up. You know the <laughs> halftime show coming your way here live on BET. And it is going to be all that. Meanwhile, look at this crowd that's starting to gather in the stadium. Huge. Here's Washington on a second down play over the middle, in and out of the hands of Sylvester Morris. And that's rare. Well, what happened there is uh, Mark Washington put that ball behind Morris. I mean, he would have made a great catch. He's already made a great catch in this game. He would have made another great catch reaching back from behind him to make that play. So the ball will come back to the 34. There's Morris, who, as we've told you, had 17 receptions. But he also had over 1,200 yards. Yeah, seven, receiving 17 yards, uh, TDs, yeah. Which broke a record that stood for 36 years at Jackson State. Washington, the thick pin, who makes the catch.
action coming up to make the hit is Joyce. I tell you what, I <laughs> Big Pin is a man, all right? He's a man because that ball took all day to get there, and he has to stand there, and he knows he's getting ready to get hit, but yet he holds on to the ball. That ball took way too long. Nice hit by Eric Joyce there. He's kind of settled down after the first uh, quarter where he was getting burnt a little bit. Thick pin with two receptions. You know, Tennessee State is missing three defensive starters. Bernie Ziegler, the linebacker, transfer from Clemson. Princeton Radcliffe, the nose guard. And, of course, their star, number 27, Lamar Carter. And trying to stop this high-powered offense without some of your better players can be tough. That's a catch by Daniel Guy. And that'll bring the ball down to the 12-yard line. Seventeen-yard reception for Guy. Saw so L.C. Cole. Uh, he has a wristband on his hand, giving him the <laughs> the secrets, <laughs> the plays. Now the coach got, is supposed to know the plays. Yeah, he got a little cheat sheet. <laughs> He's supposed to know the plays. Two receivers split to the right. Thigpen now goes in motion, and they try that little play where they shove it inside the thick pin and the defense said nothing doing Floyd came up and made the stick but he could have gotten help from three or four other guys no one was fooled yeah Larry, Larry Floyd is uh, making some plays I like his style they didn't fool anybody on that you're right I told you he's one of the, the outside linebacker slash defensive end he doesn't let anything get his way and he makes textbook tackles every time he rolling those hips again George <laughs> Floyd Six foot senior, 225 pounds, second down and 11. One on one coverage to the outside. Uh, I saw some hands by Lagarius Jennings there. He put his hands all over Sylvester Morris there. They didn't call anything. I don't know. I. Might have. You can see Morris kind of shaking his head too, as if to say, Where's the flag? Yeah, he had his hands all over him. So that'll make it third down and 11. Like uh, Morris looked tired there. <laughs> well, Jackson. You see this right here. Watch, watch. No, Legarius. He, he just had his hand on him. The referee sitting there watching it. He didn't call anything, so I guess it wasn't bad. Spreading it wide open again with two receivers to the left of Washington. No option. Huh? Tries the option. Tries to and, uh, get inside the tent. Destry Wright is a little upset with Mark Washington right there. Grayson was in on the tackle on that one. Destry wanted this ball right here. Mark had made up his mind right there that he was going to run the football. He wasn't even. It was no threat of an option right there. So now they'll attempt the field goal. Brian Reynolds will come into the ball game. He was. They're going to do what they should have done the last time they were in this situation. Go and get the three points. Well, this time they go and get the three points. And the field goal is good. So thanks to Reynolds' field goal, from 29 yards out, Jackson State pulls within four. Uh, easy kick for Reynolds, but ooh, Joyce got yeah. free. Yeah, Eric Joyce came around the outside. Now, last week against Alabama State, Tennessee blocked four kicks. A punt, an extra point, a couple of field goals. Absolutely. Special teams, it's very, very important. On any football team. On any football team at any level. 13 plays, 60 yards. And they ate up a substantial piece of the clock, five minutes and 23 seconds, resulting in the 27-yard field goal by Brian Reynolds. And now here comes Tennessee State. This time, Black had problems with it, and yet he's still going to make the big return. He's got one man to beat. Cuts back inside. Oh, my. He's going to go 100 yards. Touchdown, Avian Black. <laughs> He took the next T plunge on that after that. Now he bobbled the kick. He, you, you he bobbled the kick and it helped him. It helped him. And and of course, you can't count on doggone Brian, uh, the, the kicker there. <laughs> you can't count on him to make every single tackle. He dives out. Look at this. 
this. Look at this. He had trouble getting the ball, I, and he still runs it out of there. He that, has that much confidence. 100 yards he's now, going back. Brian Reynolds right here made both of the other tackles. Misses right there. And Sylvester Morris had a chance, but uh, he's not known for great tackling ability. Good always is in to attempt the point after. <laughs> Tennessee State is striking like lightning. And we got flags all over the place as the kick is up. They're, they're enjoying this like I am. This is fun. Man, <laughs> we get a little bit of everything here. And a lot of offense. Illegal formation by the IPN. Do not have enough men on the line of scrimmage. So they'll have to kick that thing all over again. I bet the guy that's missing was on that kickoff return <laughs> team. He's probably a little winded, trying to get a drink, and forgot about the extra point. I bet you. I'm just so happy he went running off the field with Black. <laughs> Avion yeah. has been absolutely superb returning the football. That's why he didn't want to not pick up that ball and run it out. Look at this. That's how, There's a kicker right there. <laughs> I, I, I'm laughing because the guy has, ma has made every kick, uh, every tackle on the kickoff, Brian Reynolds. No, you're laughing because that's how defensive players feel about kickers. <laughs> yeah. Black, plunges, Good Owens, converts. Uh -huh. 21 to 10. Okay. Tennessee State has supplied some thrills this evening. And guess what, folks? We still got nine minutes and 17 seconds left in the first half. An unbelievable evening already as you take a look at L.C. Cole, the head coach of Tennessee State. There's Avian Black who has made this night rather easy for him. He's had two kickoff returns that put the ball deep in Jackson State territory, setting up touchdowns, and then he comes up with a 100-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Absolutely phenomenal evening for Avian Black. Black last year, or last week that is, returned two kickoffs, averaging 26 yards. I can't wait to see what the three kickoffs have averaged for him so far this ball game. Back deep. We see the kick is thick pin for Jackson State. And he's finally dragged down by Jermaine Beal. And he gets the ball out to the 25-yard line. We've got a couple of flags sitting on the field. Yeah, a little roughhousing after the play there. Personal foul on the kicking team. 15 yards from the end of run. Boy, if you're Tennessee State, you don't make dumb penalties like that because yeah. you're you're in the lead you should be happy yeah LC Cole, he's, he's thinking that too he's saying why why are we doing this to ourselves six penalties 56 yards you know part of a winning uh, what makes a team a winning team is they have smart football players that was a very dumb penalty now make no mistake Jackson State can put some points on the board last week against Howard they had 514 total yards. So they'll march up and down the field with the best of them. But they find themselves trailing by 11 with nine minutes left here in the second quarter. Delay handoff goes to right. Right barrels out close to midfield. And that was a pickup of about 10 yards. I don't know what kind of formation Tennessee uh, had on defense there, but uh, it wasn't a very good one. They had three down linemen. And everybody else was uh, either a linebacker or a defensive back. Look at that big gap right there. They run a freight train through there. Wright, who last year carried the ball 53% of the times that they handed the ball off to a back. So he is a workhorse. And they give it to him again. Trying to bounce to the outside. Good defensive play by Danny Robles. Danny Robles, a young sophomore. I got to talk with yesterday after they had their little light workout. 6'6", 275 pounds. Coach uh, um, uh, Scott, defensive line coach, is very impressed with his work habits. He stuck around all summer long and got stronger. He was only 240 pounds last year. Gained 35 pounds in offseason, bulking up. And with that 6'6 frame, you know that he has the room to put even more on there. Absolutely. 
Under eight minutes to go. And counting, Jackson State in the I formation. This time they fake the pitch and then shove it inside to the up bat, who picks up about four yards and a first down. I like the fact that they keep giving the ball to Damian Ducksworth. They give, they're giving him a, a few share, you know, a little, little bit of the ball, keep him happy. It's a great blocker. You gotta give him the ball and he, he hits the hole very quick. If you need a couple of yards, he's the guy to go to. Washington is thrown for just under 140 yards in this ball game. They got the first down. Ball is marked at the 48-yard line of Tennessee State. This time they try the option. Washington holds on to the football. And a good play made by the middle linebacker, Brent Sterling, to come up and make they, the tackle. They need to throw that play away. Because Mark Washington is not even putting a threat on the defense that he might throw it, you know, pitch it out to right. So why even run that play? I don't want Mark Washington running the football. And look at Sterling. Sterling looks like the shirt is all tucked up into the shoulder pads, can't see his number. That's the way a football player wants to look. Guess he's getting a little carried away, right? Here's Washington, looking downfield, has thick oh, hand, and overthrows him. Actually, the pass was intended for Daniel Guy. Uh, that's the... Uh, that play was broke up by Orlando Dotson, the defensive tackle, the sophomore, also Danny Roberson's uh, roommate, all in Mark Washington's face. He had to release the ball without really seeing it and following through. And remember we talked about the balls trailing off high? There was one. So now the situation is this, third down and eight. Jackson State with the double tight end set. Washington back to pass. Looks one way. Now he's going to roll out the other. Go run it for the first down. Might get it ran into his own man, but still got the first down. <laughs> yeah. Destry, right, didn't quite know what to do. Well, Go out and make a block. Well, initially, Destry thought that uh, that uh, Mark was going to throw the ball to him. Okay. And uh, he decided to run it. He wanted to run this ball. See, right, right there. Now he's looking, he's looking. He said, okay, you gonna throw it to me? You gonna throw it to me? Come on, throw it. Okay, now obviously I'm not throwing anymore. Come give me a block, big boy. Come give me a block. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> okay. And yet he still gets the first down. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So here we go, first and 10. Ball is at the 37. They give it to Wright. Wright gets a good block and turns up field, picks up about four yards. <laughs> Sanders came up and made the tackle. Running the ball on first down is always a good thing. He picked up about six yards right there. Running the football. Now it's second and three or four. You can pretty much do whatever you want. You can go downfield one time. You can do a reverse, a misdirection. You, I mean, because that's what third and four is a lot better than third and eight. Yeah. You're saying on third and yeah. ten for that matter. Yeah. Story was in motion. I like that. I like this. They give it back to the like running it. back right. Right is dragged down, but not before he gains a lot of yards on that carry. Coming up to make the tackle was Gar Holland. And Holland may have saved the touchdown with that one. I like that play. They went to the weak side, the short side of the field. Look at all the blockers that Destry had. And he was coming through there. He was not going to be going to be denied there. So it's now time for a little break and time for our trivia question. Today's trivia question is brought to you by McDonald's. The irresistible taste that makes you say, did somebody say McDonald's? And here's the trivia question. Which Tennessee State quarterback played for the Pittsburgh Steelers? Uh, you know? I don't know. Oh, you got to know. <laughs> you got to know. We'll have more coming your way live from Memphis right after this. In the 10, back to our trivia question brought to you by McDonald's. Which Tennessee State quarterback played for the Pittsburgh Steelers? Now, his dad coached him. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, you on it? You on yeah. it? You on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. Joe Gillum. Gillum. Junior. Junior. Absolutely. 
Caps. Yeah. Jefferson yeah. yeah. Street. Yeah. Joe Gill. Okay. All right. We played Today's 68 to 71. Huh? Absolutely. Today's tri trivia question brought to you by McDonald's, the irresistible taste that makes you say, did somebody say McDonald's? And we say Joe Gillian. Joe Gillian. Yep, y'all make me hungry. <laughs> You still got half. I know say. you think the game's almost over. Did somebody say action. McDonald's? <laughs> I'm hungry. 5.30 left here in the first half. Jackson State trails by 11, but threatening to score. Ball is out on the 17-yard line. Washington looking in the end zone. And this time trying to throw in the zone, and Jennings got back, got a hand on it. Yeah, I don't know if I'd have thrown that ball up there like that. That's really the first bad throw that Mark Washington has had in a while. It looked like two or three people covering one receiver, and you throw it to him. And yet we go back to what you just talked about a second ago. They were running the ball so well. <laughs> yeah. That, you know, maybe you keep it on the ground and try to try to pick up some yards that way. Wright's running the ball extremely well. Throwing the ball, I mean, running the ball on first down is what I would like to see them do if you want to win the football game. One receiver split to the left, double tight end set, and this time they do run it. And when they saw that formation, you think that maybe Tennessee State knew they were going to run the football. Floyd once again in on the tackle. Sanders comes up and makes the pop. I, uh, I disagree with this play. Uh, second down and 10, and you, you're running laterally. You know, Tennessee's defense is pretty quick. And how about Manny Robles? He was also in on that tackle. 17-year-old kid. <laughs> Number 61. Big guy. Big guy. 6'1", 270. A nose guard who's going to be around with this program for years to come. And folks will know who Manny Robles is. Bring they're bringing him. They're bringing him. Big man in the end zone. He caught it. Oh, it was dead. No, he said it hit the ground. Oh, man. Sanders made a great play to get back. Because it looked like everybody else had been faked out on the defense. I thought Thigpen had this ball. It looks like he came down with it right here. Watch. He has the ball. How did he take that? I <laughs> How did he take that? And Sanders huh. thinks he made the interception. And LC Cole does, too. It's a little upset. Eddie Sanders, who this week was the Ohio Valley Conference Defensive Player of the Week. And he got his first start last week. They're going for another field goal. This one from 34 yards out for Reynolds. Kick is up. Kick is good. And he had distance to spare on that one. Little bitty guy, little slight guy. Got a big foot. 5'10", 160 pounds. Brian Reynolds puts another three on the board. And Jackson State now trails by eight. Washington through to Thigpen. And Saunders takes the ball. Now, see, the ball was on Thigpen's chest, and Saunders rubs it off of there. He hits the ground. Nice little play, though. Nice little play by Saunders. Like I said, he got his first start last week. And it's kickoff time again, Charles. Uh, that means we get a chance to watch Avion Black. Black. Yeah. <laughs> Three kickoff returns, 197 yards, and one touchdown. My goodness. Or as they would say, what's up, Black? <laughs> Doing he, his thing. He is special. He is really special. Let's see if uh, Brian Reynolds is going to be ready after he kicks his ball to make a play. Or does he kick it to him? Oh, if he's the sole man back. He's got it. He'll take it On at the, the one-yard line. Here we go. At Here we go. Oh. At this time, Jackson State's specialty teams were up to the task to come up and make the tackle. Right. That's the way it should be. Keith Williams, one of the players back there also. Leroy Matthews, part of the crew to make the stop. <laughs> He's got to be very excited. <laughs> I finally stopped this man. So it's first and 10 on the 20. 424 left. Tennessee State has put the ball in the end zone very quickly, though. Murray back to pass. Got tripped up. And a good play by your defensive lineman inside. Number, looks like it might have been number 68, Ed Hawes. Very, very solid play. 
Now, Leon Murray got spooked there. If he had just stayed in the pocket, he would have been fine. You know, quarterback sits there and he senses, I've been in the pocket too long, something's going to happen. Second down and nine. Oh, uh, you better pick that ball up. That might have been a lateral. That's a dangerous. That might have been a lateral. Avion Black got to get on. He's got to get on that now. I know he's tired from that kickoff return, but you can't. That, I mean, that's borderline uh, a, um, a lateral backwards. I mean, that was borderline. So I now Murray 0 for 2 on this series. J Sorry. Jackson State should have picked that ball up and ran it in and made the referees make a decision. Make the call, that. right? Yeah. Convince them that it was. Shotgun formation. Oh, and a little uh, fake as they try the inside handoff. To Durden. To Durden and Durden. It's close to a first down. And we're seeing a little bit of everything. That was pretty neat. You know, what you, what you saw there is you had Murray in the shotgun, and then Durden was up closer, and he took the handoff, a direct handoff. It didn't trick anybody, though. They've got to just make the tackle. It didn't, it didn't trick anybody. Harold Wooten came up and made the tackle, but not before they get close to a first down. Looks like they're still going to be shy, though. By a half a yard, they're going to measure. I like what I'm seeing by Tennessee State's offense. You know, Tennessee State's offense hasn't been in the, in the game in a while. The you know, last time they had the ball kicked to him, maybe on Black took it all the way. So and Jackson State drove for a while. It's been a while. Those guys probably are a little cold. Tennessee State is shy of a first down, and now the question is, are they going to punt this football? You would figure that they would so they can get the ball out of their own territory with the mark just shy of the 29-yard line. And here comes the punting unit to the field. Only the second punt of the game. This would be, one, this would be uh, Tennessee State's first punt. Jackson State punted it earlier. Now we'll have one punt. Well, we might. They might do something here. Let's see. <laughs> you never hey. know. Daniel Guy's back to receive the punt by Ashley Johnson. And the punt bounces down to the 25-yard line. About a 55-yard punt. We'll give you the exact numbers when we come back. Commercial break. We'll have more after this. Tennessee State 21-13. Just three minutes left here in the first half. You ever thought about being a male cheerleader? Nope. Never. I thought I'd ask. No. Nope. What makes a guy want to be a male cheerleader? Uh? Girls. Oh, okay. First and ten. <laughs> Ball handed up the middle. Referee, get out right. the way. Ran over the referee, ran over a couple of players, and picks up nice yardage. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen that before. I mean, he basically shoved the referee. That's the only time you can put your hands on a referee. Any other time, you, you're getting kicked out of the game. And Larry Floyd with the... <laughs> <laughs> Get out of the way. Wright made some nice moves there. Finally taken down by Floyd, first and 10. Balls at the 39. Washington's going to roll out. And run out of bounds after picking up about three yards. Stops the clock with 2.40 left here in the first half. They ought to just give Mark Washington a, a play, a quarterback draw. He wants to run the football. I mean, he could have sat in there and found a receiver downfield. Get spooked easily. So he picks up actually about five yards on that carry. And that'll make it second down and five. He's got two receivers split to each side on this one. And he gives it to his lone setback right. And this time, the defensive line makes a nice tackle. Danny Roberson. Also at the bottom of the pile, Brent Sterling. And Brent is everywhere, huh. number five. So now it's third down for Mark Washington. Say Washington really handles the pressure extremely well here at Jackson State. They're so confident with this quarterback. The pressure is coming oh, this way. The pass man. was intended for Thigpen, who couldn't hold on to the football. That would have been good for a first down. You got to catch those. I mean, that went right through his hands. So now it makes it fourth down and four. 
Watch this ball. I mean, right through his hands. A little high, but I mean, no, you got to come. You got to come down with that. So Kenny Page now will go back to punt. Page, who averaged 35 yards a punt last year, has up that after his performance last week, the 39. Those low punts. Jenkins fields it at the 13. The freshman trying to get to the outside, still on his feet. And finally dragged down. Joe Rush, the final rush. 42-yard punt. <laughs> Watch this. Now, you got to stay away from that ball right there. Nothing good can happen. <clears throat> He almost looks like he's trying to make something happen. That's when you get the ball stripped. They really like this young man, Patrick Jenkins. Five foot seven, 165 pounds. Very tiny. So with a minute 46 left, it looks like Tennessee State is going to air it out and try to put some more points on the board before intermission. But this time he can't get Good rid play, of the Andre ball. Reed. We haven't heard it. We haven't called Andre Reed's name. And we talked to uh, Coach Hughes, and he talked about number 51 is quick. He makes a lot of plays, makes a lot of things happen, but we haven't called his name today. I don't know. Uh... And another player that they really like is Tommy Head. And Head right. also hasn't done a lot but it, then again the offenses have just been making things happen throwing the ball downfield tough to hear from the interior lineman that time they tried to run the ball with Marvin Jones and he stopped immediately Ed Hawes made a nice play there that's Tommy Head there's right Tommy there. Head finally okay all right Jason Marshall number 99 also in on that tackle I think they uh, think they were a little upset with us because we hadn't called their name so they <laughs> thought they'd make a couple of plays Andre Reed first, now Tommy Head. Ed Halls makes a nice stick right there. And then Tommy Head was at the bottom, holding on to those legs. So now we have a timeout on the field. And it was just unbelievable, folks, early on if you joined us late. Tennessee State came out immediately on their first possession, scored. Six play drive, made it seven to nothing, but Jackson State came right back on their possession. Mm -hmm. Ten play drive and tied it up. Then Tennessee State, not to be outdone, went 50 or 47 yards in three plays. In 29 seconds. Unbelievable. 14 to 7. And then we get two field goals from Brian Reynolds for Jackson State. And that's how we stand right now. 21 to 13. Brian Reynolds uh, has had a heck of a day to, tonight. He's had two key tackles on Avion Black on kickoff returns, and then he's made six points, two field goals. Are you sure someone's tackled Avion Black on kickoff returns? <laughs> well, yeah, he, he made some pretty solid tackles, too. <laughs> so here we are, third down and ten. Murray, oh, and a nice play right there to find his receiver. S Sullivan with the catch. Sullivan faked the defensive back as if he was taking him way downfield and came back up and Kenny, had enough yards. Kenny Bryant was the defensive back that got his jock kind of faked out. Uh, he's only a sophomore and things like this going to happen to a young guy. Watch him. He's, he turns his hips and, and thinks that uh, he's getting taken long, getting taken deep, and he wasn't. Tommy Head came up and made the tackle. Murray's going to pick on him now. He got his arm hit right there. Murray got his arm hit, or else that ball would have been caught. And it was the same Corey play. Sullivan. It looked yeah. like it was the same exact yeah. play. Yeah, he gets his ball, I mean, he gets his arm hit, or I'm telling you, Sullivan was gone again. So the ball is now marked at the 30. Watch this right here. Great push. Great push. Hit the, it actually hit the ball. That was, once again, Andre Reed. Now we're starting to hear from Andre Reed. Second and 10. Quick little pass inside. Oh. Chris Hall. Hall bubbles. Hall holds on. Spins. Oh. Got hit. He got nailed by Richard Anderson. <laughs> Julius Hall is trying to make a lot of things happen. He's from Memphis. You know, he's trying to do whatever extra he can do for his hometown, his, his family and whatnot. Right here. Bobbles the ball, gets it back, still running. And Richard puts a lick on him. Whew. Man, 
it. I feel like I want to hit somebody again, man. Still got a first down, though. First and ten. Ball's just shy of midfield. 30 seconds left here in the first half. Murray finds his receiver. And it is complete for yet another first down. Jennings made the catch. Or Jenkins, that is. Excuse me, Patrick Jenkins. And they had four wide receivers. The last two offensive plays have been four wide receivers. And they're actually, there's three of them lined up on this side right there. Hard to cover all these guys, especially when you're playing zone. And that was Kenyon Smith making the tackle, the six, uh, six feet, 210 junior. So now Murray will go back over and talk to Cole and his staff about what's going to go down for the remaining 20 seconds of this drive. I like what the offensive coordinator James Reese is doing with this Tennessee State uh, offense. I mean, he's really mixing it up. He's given us a nice look at their offense, and they have some weapons, I tell you. They have a lot of weapons. Well, you think about it. Le uh, Leon Murray has completed 10 of 14 passes, and yet mm -hmm. the list of guys that have caught at least one pass, I mean, extensive. Yeah, he, uh, he, they're mixing it up. They're really mixing it up. I've been quite impressed with uh, Mr. Reese there, offensive coordinator for Tennessee. Jones State. has three receptions. Excuse me, not to interrupt. Uh, Sullivan's caught three. Jones has a reception. Key also with a reception. We just saw Jenkins with a catch. Julius Hall had a catch. So Murray really is spreading it out. And here we go with four wides again. Oh, Go got outside. the big old offensive lineman moving there. And how bad is that when you take a timeout, mm -hmm. set things up, and you come yeah. out and you get a penalty? Yeah, Hayward moved there. He's a little anxious. Wanted to get dead in. Ball foul, dead ball foul, ball start on the offense. You know how that happens? That happens because Andre Reed, the linebacker, defensive end on Jackson State, has been making some plays. So now Hayward says, hey, you know, I don't want this guy balling on me. First, he bull rushed him and knocked the ball out of, uh, you know, hit the ball that Leon Murray was throwing. Single set. Now he's coming around Murray, the corner. Looking downfield. And that pass was one hot caught. Actually, he caught it. No, he, yeah, he caught that. Catch. He caught that. He definitely caught it. Kenny Bryant uh, didn't have to tackle him because the... Uh, you know, the Keep in mind, hit the ground. Keep in mind, coming up at half, the Southwest Airlines halftime report. You know what that encompasses. Lots of bands, lots of music. We'll also have first half highlights and first half stats. All brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Six seconds left. And I don't know if they're going to attempt the field goal. Seth Good Owens looks like he's setting up for what would be a 50-yard field goal. Good Owens is not converted on a field goal attempt yet in his career. You got, you have six seconds. If I were James Reese, offensive coordinator for Tennessee State, I, I think that I might use four of those seconds, throw a quick out, get down the field a little bit further, you know, have your receiver step out of bounds. Instead, they'll kick a 50-yarder? 50 50-yarder. 50 the hold is by Patrick Jennings. Luther Dollar will snap the football. Kick is up. Looks like it's long enough. It's good! And how about that? Huh. Seth Goodowens with his first career field goal, and it comes from 50 yards out at the end of the first half. <laughs> Coach told us that he was kicking him in, in uh, practice. Unbelievable, folks. Seth Goodowens gives Tennessee State a 24 to 13 lead here at the Southern Heritage Classic. So we've come to the end of the first half. But you don't want to go anywhere. You know the bands are right around the corner. And it's coming up next here on BET. Welcome back to the uh, Liberty Bowl as Jackson State trails Tennessee State 24 to 13. It's time for our halftime report brought to you by Southwest Airlines. The fare is so low, you have the freedom to go places.
What an unbelievable first half we've had down here in Memphis. I mean, things start out like gangbusters. Tennessee State got the football, marched right downfield, made it 7 to nothing. Jackson State came right back. They made it 7-7, and it's just sort of been going back and forth, back and forth. A couple of stars in this ball game. Avion Black has over 200 yards, return yards, in fact. Another 50 yards, and he will have the record. In fact, he's already broken the conference record for returns. Three returns, 214 yards, one of them going for 100 yards. That also a record. Seth Good Owens has kicked a field goal of 50 yards. That's a Tennessee State record. That happened right before the end of the first half. And so Tennessee State now has the lead by the score of 24 to 13. Of course, we're here to not only bring you football, but also some entertainment. Now time for some action from the field. That's right, as we go down to the marching bands. This is the Tennessee State University marching band, the aristocrat of bands.
is a pleasure for me. I get a chance to introduce to you the debut, the first look of Liza Michelle. She's the brand new host of the new show coming up here on BET. Going to start on Monday. It's called All. Like All. All. You excited? I am so excited. I am super duper excited. So what's up with the show? <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the show. Well, the show is a show about exactly that, all. It's about everything. It's really dealing with all the entertainment and hot things that are going on in urban culture and entertainment. So, I mean, we are we do music videos, we have entertainment guests, we have a package on the show called Group Therapy, where it's like four everyday people, they sit right. around and talk about issues and stuff and other things. And then we have, like, you know, packages where we deal, we deal with celebrities on their downtime, you know, when they're outside of being a celebrity, right, all that right, stuff. Right. I mean, it's just hot. So when is it yeah. coming on? Tell us a little bit, because everybody's out there saying, you know, I want to see all. Well, we all. See you can see myself, Liza Michelle, and you can watch the premiere of all this Monday, September 13th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay, now real quickly, where are you from? Because see, these people want to know a little bit, but you're not going to tell anything about yourself. It's about every other celebrity and not you. So <laughs> I'm from, from L.A. So you like East LA. Coast style? You, you ready to go East Coast? Well, I'm still an L.A. girl at the heart, but, you know, okay. I, I do love D.C., though. But I they, love the East Coast. But they jam East Coast and West Coast, and for that, we take you back to the field <laughs> because it's time to jam some more with the bands. In fact, now time, are we going to go to the bands? We're going to the bands? Okay, Jackson State University Band, the Sonic Boom of the South. Let's get with it.
giving us a little bit of salsa, a little bit of blues, and plenty of funk. That's been our halftime report, brought to you by Southwest Airlines. But fare is so low, you have the freedom to go places. Don't go anywhere. We'll have more coming to you from Memphis as we bring you the first half stats and highlights right after this break. Forward, Tennessee State leads 24 to 13. George Johnson, along with Charles, I asked Charles, he said, Do you want to do the first half highlights? And he looked at me, he says, How much time you got? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> plenty of those. A lot happened. Tennessee got on them early. Tennessee State did. It's Leon Murray right here throws to a wide open Corey Sullivan for 11 yard touchdown reception and Tennessee State was on their way and Mark Washington answers right back to Daryl Guy 37 yard that uh, culminated a 10 play drive and the Tennessee State comes right back at him with Kyron Key a seven yard TD reception for the big guy and then this is it right here the highlight of the day a hundred yard return from Avion Black, wide open as he runs down the field. It's a foot race right there. Breaks back, gets a little bit of help, and then makes the next tee plunge into the end zone. 214 return yards for Black, and he has just been rolling. And how about the 50 yard Seth field? Good Owens, 50 yarder, sets a conference record, a 50 yard kick right there. And a school, a school record, excuse me, not conference record, but school record. And from the highlights, we move to the stats. Brought to you by Nationwide Insurance, financial services on your side. And we take a look at those first half stats. And Jackson State has more first downs. They've passed for more yards. They've rushed for more yards. Hmm. They should be winning. Well, no, not necessarily. These, uh, <laughs> it's, a <laughs> it's a different kind of ball game, folks. Jackson State is leading in every category except on the scoreboard. Unbelievable. Time of possession. They've had the ball twice as long as Tennessee State. Just unable. And it just goes to show the quick strike ability of Tennessee State. And I'll tell you what, the Ohio Valley Conference better watch out. Because if they're playing like they do for the rest of the year, they're going to be a hard team to beat. And they're looking at two-time champs. It's, it's different, though. You know, they're, they're hitting you with all kinds of things. I mean, it's, it's, it's textbook uh, offensive game planning, if you will. It's, it's, it, it doesn't look like they're blowing this team out, but yet they keep going down the field, even the little bit of time their offense has had the ball. So Jackson State now will get the football, try to get back on that scoreboard. Back deep to receive. Tory Thigpen. I'm waiting for him to break out. He hasn't done anything yet. Here's Thigpen at the 20. On two. At the 30. On two. Out the midfield. Just shy of midfield, but yes, you're right. Tory Thigpen was due. And a nice little return right there. Yeah, you know, I, I uh, I'd still like to see him get out of there and break away with that breakaway speed there. Looked like he was the. Uh, I don't know how he got slowed up here, but it, right when he gets through, makes this little cut right there and breaks a tackle. You got to turn on the Jets right there. Looked like he stumbled a little bit. 43-yard field goal, or return, excuse me. All right. And they come right back, and the first play they try is a give to the fullback, Damian Duckworth. This portion of today's game is brought to you by Nationwide Insurance, financial services on your side. Nationwide. Just underway here in our second half. Jackson State's quarterback, Mark Washington, who in the first half was 9 of 19 for 139 yards. What was that play? And obviously, something that results in a sack for Tennessee State. Your man was back there, Danny Roberson. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm not sure exactly. You know, a lot of times when the quarterback gets the play and he's giving it to the rest of his team, sometimes the teammates may miss out on it. That was an 11-yard loss. Sometimes the teammates may miss out on it. It seemed like on that play, Mark Washington didn't know the play. You know, Roberson's best game last year was against Jackson State. 
So I don't know, maybe he sees that blue and red, and red gets in the eyes. Here we are, third down and 20. Washington oh. almost intercepted, not once, but twice. Two guys had a shot at that. Gar Holland had a shot at it, and a defensive back had a shot at that. Neither one of them get it. That was, uh, that's an awful way to start the second half. And you know, um, as much as we like the bands and the halftime, that halftime is so long that these guys have to start their engines up all over again. And Jackson State's offense just couldn't get it get it done. So now they're forced to punt. Kenny Page will punt back. Back to receive the kick. Jenkins. Jenkins gets out near the 20-yard line. And he's gang tackled by a couple of Tigers. William Spencer, one of them leading the way. So with 13-11 left here in the third quarter, we take a commercial break. We'll be back. For Tennessee State has taken the lead on Jackson State coming out of the first half. Fans sure are enjoying this one. I believe everybody in the stands are rooting for the Tigers. <laughs> well, yeah, considering they're both Tigers, yeah, I would assume yeah. so. But a big following. I think Memphis Tigers play at this stadium as well. Inside handoff going to the fullback for Jackson State. That one goes to Donnell Brantley. And Brantley wrestled down by Marshall and loses a couple of yards on that one. So it'll be second down. Ball will be marked at the 18-yard line. Leon Murray, who in the first half Outstanding, Very 15 outstanding. of 11, 130 yards, two touchdowns. Murray swings it out to Durden. Durden gets out close to a first down near the 30-yard line. That was a nice play right there. Just a little swing pass to your running back. Let your running back outrun uh, the linebacker that normally will cover him. And that's good for 12, 13 yards. So they'll move this first down markers. Ball's just outside the 30, as you can see. And, you know, TSU continues to operate as if they're trailing. No huddle offense. Gets it back out to Durden. Oh, that may have been a block from behind. Durden finally wrestled down by Rashard Anderson. And that was close. Yeah, that's, they ran the same play the opposite way. And if you can't, if you can't see the face of the guy you're going to block, don't block him. That was close. That, that, was, that wasn't even close. <laughs> call, call the guy's name, and so he'll turn so you can hit him in the face. I mean, Avion Black just hits him right in the back. Illegal block in the back, 10 yards from the spot, still first down. And he made the block on Monty Gatlin, the junior. You know, as big as Gatlin is, 6'2", 240, I, I don't blame Avion for hitting him in the back, but at least call his name and get him to look. You know? Because of the penalty, they lose 10 yards. That makes it first and 20. And Murray, little delay handoff to Rob. And Umara. Nice, nice move there by Eric Chandler, 6'6", 280 senior. He avoided, uh, avoided a, a block and made a nice play on that. There is L.C. Cole in his fourth season here at Tennessee State. Led the Tigers to their first ever Ohio Valley Conference championship and was voted the OVC Coach of the Year last year. Here's Murray inside hand. No, oh, Rob, they take this out. Oh, Murray's dang. still stolen downfield. And he finds his receiver, Hall. Look at his hole. Hall makes a move, avoids one oh. tackler, still on his feet, and finally run out of bounds in Jackson State territory. You give a quarterback like uh, Murray all day to throw the ball, and he's going to burn you every time. Great job by Julius Hall coming back for the ball. You have to come back for the ball. If you want to catch the ball, come get it. And he ran his receiver way deep, turns around and comes all the way back. And 
that play good for 36 yards. And I'll tell you what, that was a great fake, though, by also by Murray. This time, they pitch it back. Why? Is the deep it, back. And why? Because Jones. you were faked out? Uh, everybody was faked out. Were you the only one not faked out? You mean everybody. I wasn't faked out. You weren't the only one faked out. No. Well, you used to get paid not getting faked out. That's I right. would hope that you were faked out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Marvin Jones is on the carry right there. That was good for eight yards. <laughs> You're not supposed to be faked out. Here they go with that. Here they go with that running back by committee. And, and you know what? I, you can't get on them right now. It works. Ball's down there at the 20, at 35-yard the line. There you see the three running backs that we're talking about. Right now, Marvin Jones is in the game. This Avion time, Black. Quick pass to Black. Black is finally dragged down by Brian Durden, but not before he picks up a first down inside the 20-yard line. The way uh, Coach Coles, uh, Tennessee State's coach, head coach, talked about um, – Talked about uh, who am I talking about here? The way the way he talked about Tory Thigpen is the way Avion Black is having the kind of game. I mean, he talked about Thigpen for Jackson State was going to be a great all-purpose guy. They continue to give it to Jones. Jones trying to make a move and again coming up to make the play. Tommy heads. Head make the play, makes the play after Jones picks up about three yards. All right, another couple of plays, and uh, you know, now my question Marvin is, Jones will get tired, and then they'll bring in uh, Donnell Brantley or somebody. Of the three backs they have played, right? Who has impressed you? To be honest, Dirt. Why? Michael Dirt. He, 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 he showed he can catch the ball out of the backfield as well as run the ball. And then I saw him make a couple of nice blocks. Murray sticks that one inside the arms. Corey Sullivan. Corey Sullivan. Yeah. Sullivan makes the catch close to another first down. This team has a chance to pick up a first down before scoring, and they're inside the 10-yard line. This is how you, you execute your first offensive series after halftime. You know, you got to turn it back on. It's hard to kickstart that engine. It's hard to turn it back on. You've been in the locker room for 20, 25 minutes. Fourth down. They want to shove it down Jackson State's throat, and they do. Donnell Brantley. Donnell Brantley goes in from 70, or acts, check that. That was from eight yards out on a fourth down play. It didn't look like anybody wanted to tackle the guy. I know he's 5'11", 225 pounds, but come on. Somebody put a helmet on him. Last week, he scored two touchdowns. Look at this. He, I mean, he, nobody wanted to hit him. Nobody wanted to hit him. Slips look, off. Look. Kenny Bryant, come on now. <laughs> you got to. I know you're a corner, and, you know, you want to cover a receiver, but you got to make a play now. You gotta. Brantley, 5'11", 225 pounds. They call him a power man. But as Charles would say, that didn't take much power. No, he, uh, he didn't have to do much. It was a wall sent to the end zone. Monty Gatlin, number 44, got blocked real well, and it was left to Kenny Bryant, and Kenny Bryant said, at least slow the guy down. I don't want to hit him. So Seth Good-Owens will attempt to convert the point after attempt, after a penalty. And boys, nothing like a 50-yard field goal to give you some confidence. He booted that one rather firmly, and with that, Tennessee State leads 31-13. Coming to you live from the Southern Heritage Classic, Tennessee State looks for their second straight win. Tennessee State leads 31 to 13, and real quickly, we like to, of course, thank the folks, Time Warner of Memphis, Tennessee, for their support of Buckle Up America. There's too much to lose. You can never stress that point or overstress it. Always buckle up. Jackson State had to buckle up for quite a ride before this ball game, huh. and they've been taken for one. 31-13 Tennessee State leads, and they just don't seem like they are showing any signs of slowing down whatsoever. Torrey Thigpen back deep to receive the kickoff by Seth Goodwill Owens. Good Owens this time angles it to the corner. Is fielded 
by number four, Courtney Harris. And Harris will take it out to about the 21-yard line where Jackson State will start their series. Uh, it's not too late for Jackson State, but they got to start putting some plays together. Nine plays, 80 yards, and an eight-yard run by Mr. Brantley. That's Donnell Brantley. And it took just three minutes and 44 seconds. And like Charles said, that's the way you want to come out your first drive after the halftime. That's right. Especially when you've been sitting for about 20 minutes, 25. So I formation behind Washington. And Jackson State's going to really have to start picking things up if they want to get back in this ball game. Pitches it back deep to Destry Wright. And Wright picks up a couple of yards. In the first half, Wright rushed for 86 yards on 17 carries. The key there is no touchdowns. They go away from them when they get inside the red zone, inside the 20-yard line. They seem to not want to throw the ball to him. I mean, not hand the ball to him. You can throw up. it to him, too. He had four catches, 80 yards last week. Pick up a five, second down. And a quick out pattern. Finds his receiver, Lawrence, Lawrence Story. Story. Yeah, that was a good, a good little move by Story there. I don't know if you're... Watch the move uh, Story makes after he catches this ball. You know he's going to take a hit. <laughs> Gave him a little hesitation and there. Marky Stevens went flying all over the place. Now you see me, now you don't. Story is 6'6", 190. So if he turns sideways, he can almost be invisible. That's so play. skinny. <laughs> I got to laugh at my own jokes. Honestly. Come on, George. Oh, my fault. <laughs> Ball at the 31-yard line, first and 10. <laughs> I for, and somebody Come getting on. a little over-anxious on the offensive Come line. On now. That's, That's Frank Wynn, <laughs> the senior, moving a little early. You don't see seniors making mistakes like that. He's the senior statesman on the line as well. And, you know, you don't want to set a bad example for the younger guys. <laughs> You know, often what happens in those situations, somebody's done something to him, hit him upside the head after the play or whatever and got him fired up and he's ready to go. It's time for retribution. First, 15. And they're still trying to run the football and Tennessee State loading up on him. Floyd is there. Uh, Danny Roberson. Roberson. And Wright is probably going to go back to this. We've been calling Danny Bellas. Robinson's name a lot. That's what I have. believe uh, what he's doing is from the pep talk I gave him yesterday. You think that's what it is? Yeah. Look at big number 88. <laughs> All up in there. Now hold on to it now. I did, I did I gave him a nice little pep talk now. They, they're coming through there. They're coming through the line. The Jackson State's offensive line is not getting any movement off the line of scrimmage. They're not moving those big guys. Look at Manny Robles in there. Big Second number 61, and 61, nose guard. Washington over the middle finds Dickpin. Dick he got a block from Harris and is able to get a first down. That was a pretty good block by Courtney Harris downfield to at least get him some extra yards. I know a lot of people out there that watch these games wonder, after you see a play like that, you wonder, why can't they get do that every time? Well, you know. Why can't you? <laughs> good question. <laughs> the play isn't called every time. <laughs> No, he, what happened is Thigpen went underneath the zone. So Tennessee State was in a zone. Thigpen was in a slot position and ran underneath the zone, deeper than the linebackers, but shallower than the cornerbacks. Ball's at the 46, first and 10. Washington looking downfield for his big time receiver, Sylvester Morris, and it was overthrown. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna even harp on that, but Mark Washington, the one thing that he does is he doesn't set up well, and a lot of times his balls trail off high. Well, you said there were a couple of reasons as to why that can happen. Is it because he's not set? Yeah, you know, now, th there he didn't look too bad. He didn't look too bad, but he wasn't, he was, he was bouncing a little bit like a boxer. You know, he didn't have his feet planted when he threw. He might have even actually been up in the air a little bit when he's throwing the ball. Second down and 10. Much, in the much better, much better throw by Mark Washington right there. And when you throw that out pattern, you have to make sure you throw the ball nice and firm as he threw that to Morris, though, Sylvester Morris. Watch his feet here. Gets good turn, yes. That's how you throw the football. 
Results in a reception for Sylvester Morris. See, he knows right here, he knows he's throwing the out pattern. He has to plant his feet. Now, when he's throwing the ball down the field, you do the same thing. You can't be bouncing or the ball's not going to hit its mark. 14-yard gain, ball at the 40-yard line of Tennessee State. Clock continues to tick here in the third quarter. Just three right. Handed First. inside to the big guy, the senior from Clarksdale, Mississippi, Destry, who we talked about in the first half. Last year rushed for 1,528 yards. He's going to have over 100 yards tonight, but they're not going to win if they don't start, you know, putting this thing together. Like I said, if they get into the red zone, if they get inside the 20-yard line, give the ball to right. When they get inside the 20-yard line, they call a whole different offensive scheme. I don't understand it. Wright, by the way, has 94 yards so far. Well, he's going to get his 100. Okay. Tennessee State kind of sneaking up there on second down. Now, I didn't teach, I didn't teach Danny Robinson that. <laughs> <laughs> he did that on his own. He was playing actually a little wider than he normally does. Well, you know, it could be the sign of a player who's extremely excited after talking to him. Got all flash, <laughs> all flash on the defense. <laughs> Or maybe he just wanted to get his name called. We've done that enough. And there's Washington. Right. Looking to sneak up with Roberson, as you said, just a yeah. excited. Yeah. And the young guy. I, I was just watching him. Watch, watch him. He looked like he wasn't comfortable in his stance right there and fell forward a little bit and fell across the line of scrimmage and said, oh, heck with it. I'll go with it. Here's a down you can go for something. Second down and one yard to go. You get an extra play right here. Washington escapes the pressure. Going to hold on to the football and run inside. The Sylvester Morris. Morris. Sylvester Morris made a nice uh, block there for his quarterback. You don't want to get his quarterback hurt, then he won't get the ball thrown to him. <laughs> well, actually, they have pretty good quarterback, second street quarterback, T.C. Taylor. Last year, I tell you what, I, four touchdowns. I like Mark Washington. I'm talking about him as planting his feet and everything, but I like this kid. Bring him into an NFL camp. Don't change him. Don't move him to another position. Leave him at quarterback. Give him the technique. Put him, give him a quarterback coach. Seven yard pickup for him on that run. He ran for 40 last week against Alabama State. You don't want your quarterback running for that many yards. <laughs> Only bad things can happen. We weren't there. Maybe he was running for his life at times. Who knows? They're going to try a little screen. I guess he was just trying to get rid of it, looking for right. He was in the vicinity. And it looks like they want a, a flag on Tennessee State side, but come on. Look at number 61, Manny Robles. He's 17 years old, 6'1", 270. I believe he's bigger than 270. He has great quickness, Coach told us. And he is, he's causing some havoc in there in the line. He's playing nose guard, so a lot of times he's on a center. Well, you know about Manny, see, you know, he's got good training. His father was a sparring partner of George Foreman. That's right, that's so, right. So, you know, when you try to get him rid of, away from your father, it doesn't matter how big you are, and look, he, he develops some quickness. He looks like a football player, too. He got his shirt all untucked, trying to breathe a little bit. <laughs> Here's Washington on second down. Looks like he found his receiver who dropped no, the football. No, I think he dropped the football. He didn't hold it long enough. That Basically, what happened with Story right there is Story was seeing the action coming at him. He was thinking more about getting away from the would-be tackler than catching the football. Running before he got the ball in his hands, huh? No, trying to get out the way before he got the ball in his hands. Well, he, he looked up. He, he looked saw up the Sanders team. coming his way, and he said, oh, no, 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 I don't know. You don't, you don't ever want to see it coming. <laughs> Close your eyes. <laughs> Maybe that is why he missed the ball. <laughs> Under five minutes left here in the third quarter. Tennessee State comfortably in the lead over a Jackson State team that last year finished the season in the flurry, 7-1 in conference play. This guy, Mark Washington, had unbelievable numbers. Sylvester Morris. Destry Wright also had unbelievable numbers, and yet that hasn't helped them in this ball game. They're trailing 31-13. Charles Mann already on the 11th play of this drive, and I would assume they really want to come up with some points out of this thing. Yeah, you know, they've, they've been in the red zone inside the 20, 
three times today. Once they came away with nothing, the other two times with field goals, they got to put seven points on the board. Single set back, two receivers split to the right for Mark Washington. All day. Looking downfield, and this receiver almost makes the catch, but it was in and out of the hands of Story. Mark, uh, Mark Washington missed uh, Tory Thigpen, who was open running the seam route. Remember I told you what the seam route is, running right down the hash marks. And against he the was, zone, you said that's yeah. effective. He's in the slot right there, and he's going to run straight down the, down the center. Mark never looked at him, I don't believe. He had his eyes on Sylvester Morris the whole time, but Thigpen was open. So now it's fourth down and ten. Jackson State trailing 31-13 is going to go for it on fourth down. And we've not, this is not new. We've seen this a couple of times tonight already. Yeah, we have. Here's Washington. Oh. Big pressure, and he's dragged down. Oh. You Change got a possession. Fourth down and 10. You know they're coming after you. You got to throw. All you need is 10 yards. And Real quick or something, or uh, Yancey, uh, I mean not Yancey, but Corey, or Tory Thigpen coming underneath like he did earlier. Remember I talked about how they can't, why can't they do that all yes, the time? Absolutely. Uh, bad, bad call right there. So because of the failure to convert on the fourth down, Tennessee State takes over. Now time for our, our Circuit City Connection. And for that, we go to Jackson State's early touchdown. And that would be for Mark Washington to his wide receiver, Daniel Guy. And that one was good for 37 yards and tied the score up at seven apiece. Today's connection has been brought to you by Circuit City. Answers in every department. Low prices all over the store. 36 left here, and L.C. Cole looks a little relaxed. And why yeah. not? His club has done the job defensively here in the second half. It looked like no defense was going to step up early in this ball game, but now Tennessee State has settled down defensively and really put the stop on Jackson State. I don't, I don't even really believe it's, it's, it has to do with Tennessee State's defense doing a good job. I, I believe it's Jackson State's offense not doing what it takes. They can move the ball. They moved the ball, 11 play drive down the field. Uh, you know, John Shannon, the offensive coordinator for Jackson State, seems to tighten up when they get in the red zone, or near the red zone in that case. Well, here's Leon Murray, almost perfect, 15 to 19, but they'll keep the ball on the ground and give it to Rob. Rob. And Umara, Rob. Nice little game right there, Rob, before that. I tell you what, this running back by committee sure is working. It's not bad. It's, it sure is working. I, I, I have to take back what I said. I like this guy. I like Rob. He, even though he didn't make it to the outside there, bro broke a tackle. He's not that big to be able to break a tackle like that. Rob with five carries, good for 37 yards. He's just a junior. This is his first year with the Tigers, so they're looking for good things from him. Murray on second down and 15, finds his receiver over the middle, and Sullivan. And Corey has made a couple of really nice catches. I like, I like what I saw by Murray right there. Now, I told you he had off-season shoulder surgery. Running one way, running to the right and throwing back I mean, running to the left and throwing back to the right is pretty difficult to watch this. That's a pretty nice play. And if you look at it, Sullivan did a good job. He was cutting across field, saw his quarterback in trouble, Stopped. and came back to yeah. football. Running back by committee. Here Brantley, we go. Wide open. Brantley hog-tied by Brian Durden, but not before he gained a big yard, a big chunk of yards, that is. They don't seem like they want to tackle this guy. I don't know what Brantley has done to these guys, but people tend to get out of the way when he starts running. 27-yard game for Brantley on that one. Brian Durden had to go high on him. <laughs> He's up around this horse for as long as I can. And Brantley said, jump on, big boy, because here we go. He gets the ball inside the 40-yard line, first and 10. Inside pass to Jenkins, the sophomore. Nice little spin move. Jenkins is wide open. Jenkins, touchdown. Nice move by Patrick Jenkins, the freshman.
tell you what, Jackson State's defense, they look beat out there right now. They look beat down. Plays like that happen late in games when your defense gets tired. I don't understand it. There's no way, I mean, great moves by Patrick Jenkins. Great moves. And they love this kid, Patrick Jenkins, who is doing everything for them. He returns, he holds, he catches the touchdown pass. And after the point after, Tennessee State leads up by 25. Seven-yard touchdown pass from Murray to Jenkins. Tennessee State leads 38 to 13. Look, look at that. You don't dive out, lunge out to try to make a tackle, Brian Dart. You got to, you got to, it's amazing to me. These guys, if I was a defensive coach on this team, I would get up in somebody's face and I would rip them a new one. I'm they, serious. They'd be ready now. I, I got a feeling, coach. I mean, you don't you don't lay down with a whole nother quarter coming and they're laying down. Four plays, 77 yards. It took just two minutes and four seconds. We'll be right back. A strict disciplinarian. Did you call him the head coach? Interim head coach. Okay. Along with an interim athletic director, along with an interim president of the school. And? I don't know where they're going with that. <laughs> well, I know where they're either going to get back out of this. Either going. everybody's coming in or, or leaving out. Well, on the other hand, you got to figure that he's going to, because he's a disciplinarian, what kind of kick was that by Good Owens? Is it kind of uh, dropped up and they get the ball back? It worked well. Wow! <laughs> Unbelievable. Tennessee State continues to put on the pressure as they recover the kickoff. <laughs> and recovering the football and this is this is this is crazy. I I can't remember in all my football years of seeing a team lay down for like Jackson State is laying down. For a second there, I thought he muffed that kickoff, and maybe it was done by design. Maybe a coach the coach sees that. Well, you down remember and says, the last? Let's keep taking it. To well, him. you remember the last kick he had? He kicked it over to that side. This one is called like a, a little squib kick, but you kick it up into the air. You just, you know, I I don't know if he planned that or that was a, a miscue, but it looked like it was a planned play. Those front line and those second uh, tier uh, return players don't get to handle the football very often. You know, it goes over their head and it goes to the, uh, you know, to the uh, receiving. Uh, what are you looking at there? Well, looking at Tennessee State, almost nine yards per play. Jackson State, just five yards per play. Uh-oh. And look at Jackson uh -oh. State going for more. Oh. And that was very close. They're going to say... That should have been caught. Complete. Yeah, that should have been caught. Pass was intended for Corey we can't, I guess we can't expect him to get, make every play, but uh, that one should have been caught. Well, the way Mark uh, Leon Murray's been throwing the football, 17 he, to 22 prior to that catch. He I threw mean, the ball only, right where it needed perfect. to be. Watch, watch how he... Good setup right here. Let's it go. Throws the ball up enough. Corey should have grabbed that with both hands. Trying to make a spectacular play on Kenny Bryant, the sophomore. He could have caught that. Second down and 10. Ball's at the 35. Quick out. That is definitely a lateral. They're going to work Jenkins, the freshman. And he gets wrestled down to the ground at about the line of scrimmage. And coming up to make the tackle right there, number nine, Brian Dirt. And look at the sideline for Jackson State. I don't, I don't like this. If I was Coach Hughes, I'd turn over a table, get up in somebody's face, kick something. I mean, you can't go down like this. Guys are sitting down over there. I'm, I'm, I'm mad. <laughs> Jenkins picked up three on that one, so it makes it third down and seven. Out of the backfield, Jones. Jones with another first down, and he's tackled by Monty Gatlin. Boy, they just... I tell you what, this, these running backs, they're staying fresh. I guess uh, L.C. Cole is uh, proving me wrong right now. On the other hand, he could be looking for a starter, and these guys won't let no, him pick one. Well, he told us he's looking for a starter. Um, we know that, but right now, until he finds that, that guy, he's got a pretty nice setup going. 
I formation. A minute 30. We're fast approaching. Pitch back goes to Brown. And Brown looking for some running room and finds a couple of yards before being taken down by Tommy Head. You know, there, there becomes a time in a game where one team sees blood, realizes the other team is being beat down, and then you just start going for it. This is where you pad your stats. This is where you start having fun. This is when you can see the fat lady in the stands <laughs> warming up her voice. I mean, and it's early. And we still have a quarter to go. That's folks. what I'm saying. We still have a quarter to go. Single set, two receivers split to the right for Murray, who's going to loft it up into the end zone. Avion Black. And Black looked like he had gotten a step on the defender. I don't know if, I believe he might have been able to catch that ball if he had kept running instead of taking that little nest teeth plunge again, trying to dive at it. And there's Leon Murray, the senior from Shreveport, Louisiana. Last week threw for 251 yards and was named the Ohio Valley Conference Player of the Week. And the way he's playing right now. He was at the University of Pittsburgh playing basketball along with football. You know, transferred over. There he is on third down looking for Rob. And Rob turned around a little late. And that pass is incomplete. So now that'll make it fourth down and four yards to go for first. And why not bring in Seth Good Owens? <laughs> why not? Who kicked a 50-yard field goal before the end of the first half. Tennessee looks like they uh, look like they've been in they've been playing football three months already. This one will be from 35 yards out. Jenkins is the holder. The kick is up. Chip shot. Chip shot. The kick is no good. Wide to the right. Oh, oh, okay. He had plenty in he, that kick. He is, he is uh, human. He is human. It's been an exceptional day today. So 37 seconds left here in the third quarter, and this game just starts to drag on a little bit now, and you're wondering if Jackson State wants to pick up the pace a little bit. You know, you talk a lot about them running the football to establish. Right. Now they've got to show us the fact that they can throw the football. Right. You know, when we, uh, when we knew we were going to do this game and as we were preparing for it, my first question was, is this a rivalry? You know, one's from the Ohio Valley Conference, one's from the SWAC. Is this, a, is this a rivalry? It's a rivalry because of a coach, a man named John Merritt. Tell me about uh, John Merritt. Who, 10 years, coached to Jackson State, and then moved on to Tennessee State. He coached there for 20 years on his way to 232 victories. In fact, they had the first ever John Merritt Bowl last week. Ooh, and a oh. nice little block right there as Washington gets free for a few yards. But they had the first annual John Merritt Bowl between Alabama State, Tennessee State. Just unbelievable. From what I understand, he didn't play for 10 years because after the move, Jackson State wasn't happy about losing to John Merritt. So the rivalry is because of one man, John Merritt, who coached Jackson State and became a legend for 10 years from 1952 to 62, leaves that school and comes to Tennessee State and coaches there for 20 years and is a bigger legend. <laughs> and that's, that's how the rivalry gets you know, started. You know how schools can be now. Very nice, very nice, Charles. Very nice. We'll be back with more nice stuff after this. The portion of today's game is brought to you by Nationwide. Insurance, financial services on your side. And speaking of nationwide, why don't we take a look at our nationwide third quarter stats? Sure, let's do that. There they are. Voila. Analyze. Well, you know, if you look at this thing, if you didn't know the score and you look at Jackson State's numbers, 22 first downs to Tennessee, 18. 180 yards, and that's, look at the passing yards. I mean, Tennessee State is dominating there. 27 minutes, though, for Jackson State to 17. 17 minutes, and you can put up 
38 points in 17 minutes worth of offense. What is an NFL coach going to say to you if you've got that kind of advantage title possession-wise and yet unable to capitalize and put points on the board? Well, you know, unfortunately, it is, or fortunately, it's a team game and everybody's got to take some of the responsibility. I think this Jackson State football team is better than what we're seeing right now. And I think a lot of it has to do with the, the decisions being made. You know, I mean, the guys on the sideline that aren't in the game, making the decisions, calling the types of plays they're calling. In fact, if I was Jackson State right now, I'd be in a huddle. Why not be in the huddle? You ain't, I mean, you know, I want to make sure everybody gets the play because right now we need some big plays. Destry Wright gained three yards on that play, finally brought down, met rudely by Larry Floyd. Second down and seven. Pass was intended for Morris. And after a shaky start by the secondary of Tennessee State, have they buckled down a little bit? Yeah, yes they have. Absolutely. They uh playing great. Now look right here. It looks like um, uh, did he get to that ball before? Did Jennings get to the I, 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 I don't think the ball was ever going to get to him. Yeah, but it looked like Jennings uh, hit him before. Uh, I'm look, I'm grabbing his straws at this point. <laughs> want, the game, want the game to be a little closer. Putting the football. And Jenkins with the return. And Jenkins is dragged down near the 40-yard line. Tennessee State is in control here. State. Jackson State is still in at halftime. They they never came out after halftime. You know, third quarter didn't score anything, didn't move the ball very well. They moved it at times and got stopped. Meanwhile, Tennessee State keeping the ball on the ground on a second down and three play, and it looks like they may have another first down as they continue to let that clock roll. That was Brantley with the carry. And he's leaving out, and now we'll bring in Jones, Marvin Jones. There goes that running back by committee. You know, maybe we, maybe Jackson State should have seen this coming last week. There's a look at Coach Robert Hughes, the interim coach for Jackson State. Last week, the defense gave up 380 yards worth of offense to Howard, mm -hmm. and you know they they didn't they didn't beat him that impressively to me. And they're playing a much better team in Tennessee State tonight. Their, def their defense is ranked sixth in their conference out of 10. They probably dropped way down from at this point. Then we got to talk about the offensive line. You know, uh, Tennessee State's offensive line is huge. Huge. Averaging 302 pounds. Look at that. Look at that. That's a big difference. You know, you 302 pounds to 287. If you wow. talk to the folks around here at Tennessee State, they believe they have three or four guys that are All-American potential. And yet right. you can't tout that many guys. So they call the other guys, you know, all-conference. Marvin Jones, Jones around the gets corner. to the outside and gets close to the 20. But we got a flag that will bring it back. But back to that offensive line you were talking about, Benny Anderson, 6'5", 305 pounds. And look at him just look at, look at that beef. Look at that beef right there. Oh, look at that beef. Oh. Anton McNutt, I think I called for a holding right there. Let's see what the call is. Motion on the op -ed. Illegal, Illegal motion. Illegal motion. Okay. Somebody wasn't set. So you were saying, but go again, ahead, name some of the beef. But again, we're talking about some of those guys. I mean, when you talk about a Benny Anderson, who's 6'5", 305 pounds. Antoine McNutt, who's 6'4", 330. 330. That's your guards. Yes. Your tackles, 6'4", 305 is Lawrence Smith. And then Michael Thompson, All-American candidate, 6'6". Mm -hmm. And he's the, he's the light one at 290. Yeah, look at this, making it count. Nine, nine possessions, six scoring drives for Tennessee State. It's offense. Efficiency. Very efficient. Leon Murray is playing First sound down. football. Now, he didn't receiver oh. and another catch. This one by Julius Hall. And that's inside the 10-yard line. And boy, they really are just that, putting nails 
to the coffin. Well, that's on a pretty good defender, too, there, Rashard Anderson. Um, I think Rashard took his his uh, eyes off of uh, the receiver for a second there. He didn't see where Julius Hall went. And, and he block. got behind him there. Credit Marvin Jones with a good block also. Marvin, so you're line. looking at the line and, and stuff. And you know now, what? Huh? I'm trying to go to your world. Okay. That's your world. Okay, okay. The line is your world. Yeah, okay. And Jones actually is a, is, is a back, but you know, you like that blocking thing, that interior game you talk about. Look Inside at this. Hand off. Grant, Grantley. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he's got two touchdowns tonight. Both of them, he could have been carrying a, a baby with him, <laughs> and the baby would be fine. It's amazing. That's another eight yard run for Donnell Brantley, which makes it his second touchdown or rushing touchdown of the night. Now, now Donnell Brantley is the third back to come in, or the fourth back, excuse me. He's Jordan, the fourth Jones, back, Rob, and then Brantley. And he's got two touchdowns. Go figure. Good Owens with the extra point. Tennessee State is just continues to extend this lead 46 to 13. Leon Murray, unbelievable, 19 to 26, 290 yards. Jackson State is dedicating their 99 football season to James Big Daddy Carson, who stepped aside as the head coach in May. Carson underwent surgery and he really made an impression on the new coach. People don't know, Coach Carson was my first coach. 36 years ago, we met uh, at Russ College in Holly Springs, Mississippi. Um, I was a defensive player, he was a defensive coach. We had two coaches, offensive and defensive coach. And that was an opportunity to meet. I didn't know he was going to turn out to be the great man that I took over for 36 years later. But it, it, it's something. And I tell you what, there's a lot of feeling between he and I because we have gone through the ranks together. We fought battles together. And now, you know, I'm trying to take the battle on for him. Unfortunately, for Coach Hughes, they're losing this battle, 45-15. But when you talk about James Carson, who, as I said, underwent surgery in April, he was the Tigers' head football coach. Where he compiled a 54-25-1 record. He won two SWAC titles in 95 and 96. His teams made three trips to the NCAA or NC1AA playoffs. And in 96, he had his best year at 10-2. But as I said, health reasons, he's taking him off the bench. And he's probably not liking what he sees tonight. His Tigers having problems. Thigpen with the return from out of the end zone. He doesn't quite get to the 15 yard line. Trying to make something happen. Something out of nothing. So when you take a look at Jackson State coming out on the field, Mark Washington has completed just 12 of 28 passes for 180 yards. Destry Wright is still looking for 100 yards rushing. Yeah, remember I said, uh, I said about right before the end of half, I said he'll get his 100 yards. But that was when the sun was out. He still hasn't gotten it. He still hasn't gotten it. So Vesta Morris, the big time receiver, has five receptions for 81 yards. Thigpen has caught three balls for 35. Daniel Guy, two catches for 54 yards. Good numbers. And yet, the result, as you take a look at Tory Thigpen, whose father actually played with Coach Hughes back in the right, day. Right, right. And he's no relation to Yancey Thigpen. I keep wanting to call him Yancey. You're looking for those big plays. <laughs> Last week against Howard, he had 155 all-purpose yards, so Torrey is truly a player. Very intense, Coach says. And we had a penalty on that play, so Tennessee State will re-kick the football from the 30-yard line. Big Pin will get another chance, and that's good news for the Tigers, who were looking at first and 10 on the 12th. Here's your short kick. Big pin with the return and spins out near the 45-yard line where the Tigers will start first and 10. Now you look at the uh, Jackson State's rush yardage. And there's James Carson, there's James. who we just talked yeah. about. 
Oh, there he is. And we hope he everything looks, is okay, and hopefully he's feeling well and healthy. And he he's looks still getting fit around. right there. Yeah, that was a shot of him last year on the sidelines. He graduated from Jackson State in 1963. James Carson. New quarterback looks like out on the field now for the Tigers as he completes his first pass to Sylvester Morris. And that looks to be T.C. Taylor. Is that Taylor? No, they still have... Yep, T.C. Taylor is out on the field now. T.C. wearing a different number? Yeah, he's been number 11, according to the media guides, but we'll let him wear 10. Taylor completes his first pass. Makes it second down and three for the Tigers. See if he can get this team down the field. Gets a quick one to Morris. Morris gets the first down before being tackled by Brent Sterling. Sterling and Floyd are extremely active defensively for Texas State. <laughs> yes, they are. Yes, they are. The little lightweight uh, defensive ends slash outside <laughs> linebackers. And, you know, that's what L.C. Cole likes. He likes those kind of, I mean, he works specifically with, he is the head coach, but he works specifically with the defense and more specifically with the defensive ends or the outside linebackers. Well, you know, he talked to, you, to us the other day about trying to get his outside linebackers to come up with some plays to the outside. Have they done that? They hadn't had to, to be honest with you. They, they were set up for a Jackson State team that never showed up. That Jackson State team is still a couple hours away uh, in the car or whatever trying to get their way here, here to Memphis. That's Destry Wright with the carry. And he carries it for a first down. And just went over 100 yards. Absolutely. That's a 10-yard carry. Takes the ball just shy of the 30-yard line. 22 carries, 104 yards. Normally that means winning football. Not tonight. So T.C. Taylor... He's completed actually his first two passes. And he'll go back and try it again. Here comes the blitz. And he gets away from it. Sure did. He and never Taylor. went down. His knee never hit. And Taylor looks like he picked up yet another first down for the Tigers. Wow. TC last year actually was the second leading rusher on the club. <laughs> so he has the ability to escape. Right. Folks. Wow. I can't believe he didn't go down. Look at this. And then he's showing right here. He got a little bit of move. Let me put, try to put a little move on uh, uh, Jamie Watkins there. He did pick up the first down. Ball's down to 20. 32-point lead huh. for Tennessee State. I can't count that high. There's an option. And he actually tosses it. You saw they ran the option three times earlier in the game. Never did Mark Washington even hit to pitch the ball out. This time, T.C. Taylor pitches it, pitches it early enough that Wright can get ahead, look downfield, and make a big play. Now, they're in the red zone. In the red zone so far tonight, they've only come away with six points while in the red zone with two field goals. 14-yard carry for Destry Wright in that one. So it's first and goal. Ball on the six-yard line. Fade. Taylor up. Oh, wow. Oh, that's definitely a, a – I don't know if that's offensive pass interference or defensive pass interference. It's definitely interference. A lot of hands and – you don't think Jennings, uh, Jennings played pretty well on this defense? Watch this. Watch this. A lot of hand fighting right there. A lot of hand fighting. How about saying a good no call? No, it's definitely, it definitely uh, was a push off. And they got the penalty because the ball now is in Now it's first, first and goal to go, too. You got four shots to get seven points now. Ball's at the three. They've got two receivers split wide to the right. Destry Wright scores. The right, and Wright finally gets in the end zone. So Destry Wright goes in for the score. Now, you know, it's a shame that you put in a new quarterback, as we would say in the, my old defensive terminology, open up a, a new can of quarterback. <laughs> And, and they go down and score like this. A lot of what we're seeing right here had to do with the play calling, not necessarily the quarterback. Of course, TC 
Taylor made a nice play on not getting sacked earlier. It kept, actually kept the drive alive, but most of it was due to the play calling. So now the Tigers of They're Jackson gonna, State are going to go for two. Yeah, why not? In motion, Morris. Taylor is looking for the corner. Oh, wide out. open. Oh, my Could not goodness. find his receiver, Tory Thigpen. He had him wide open, as you said. Still, Thigpen doesn't catch that. How many balls are you going to get thrown to? You catch the ball. That was a makeable catch. I tell you, I'm, I'm, you know, I don't know. Tory, I don't know if Tory showed up tonight. The balls, you can catch that. I don't care how hot. Right there. What? You can't catch that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could have caught that. You gotta catch you were that. You're looking at me like I better catch that. 944 left here in the fourth quarter. Tennessee State rolling. Tennessee State just sort of riding this thing out now. Yeah. Keep the ball on the ground. Let that clock move. They lead 45 to 19. Is, is Avion Black back there? Uh, this Looks thing, like he's one of your deep backs. All right, they better not kick it to him. Also back, Julius Hall. Julius Hall goes to Julius. And Julius says, "Now, Avion, I want to get me my name in the paper." Uh oh, he's at the 20. He's uh -oh. at the 30. He's at the 40. He's at the 50, and he's rolling, looking for a touchback across the grain. Oh my! And yes, that's right. Hall oh, also looking to get the papers and. And yet a flag has been thrown on the third. So maybe it's not Avion Black. Maybe it's the special teams of Jackson State. You knew he wasn't going to finish. Catches his ball one yard deep in the end zone. Breaks hand tackles. Picks up a blocker right here. Decides to cut it back. And then it's a foot race right here. Personal foul. Personal foul. On the kicking team, half the distance to go, first down. 87 yard return for Julius Hall, the junior from Memphis. Yes. Put it in front of the home folks. That's right. Brian Darden, he had Brian Darden in a foot race. He knew he wasn't going to win it right here and decides to stop and let Darden overrun him. Darden doesn't. Flag was thrown back at the 30, so it must have happened somewhere else down on the play, maybe after the cutback. Wow. But because of the penalty, the ball goes half the distance to the goal. And look at Leon Murray moving up in the he, fifth it, place. He is moving up. Total offense. He will be passing Kenneth Biggles real soon. Ball is located on the six-yard line, first and goal. And they also have brought in a brand new quarterback, talking about Tennessee State. Chris Perkins now. And you've got some offensive linemen that are not very happy. <laughs> Maybe a couple of cheap shots. This is when it starts yeah. to get gets well, a little dirty out there, huh? Yeah, what happens is all of a sudden now the defense of Jackson State doesn't like being blocked. Now they've been getting blocked all day long. Now all of a sudden they don't like it. And I can't really get on it because I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the inside handoff. You know who that is, Brantley. Well, when they get around this part of the field, give the ball to Brantley. Because he's a hard runner. He's 225 pounds, at least that's what it has on the program. He looks like more like 240 to me, not 225. 5'11, little power ball. So Brantley continues rolling. When you think about Brantley, it was a tailback. Who they moved the fullback. That was about that was about 20 pounds ago. <laughs> and the pass was intended for Corey Sullivan. And broken up. Looked like Kenny Bryant was on the defensive end of that one. Yeah, I might. I, I was looking for a flag there. Thought there might have been a flag. So did Corey. Yeah. Well, I, I think it might have been on Corey though. <laughs> <laughs> so was, get up. That's when you go running back to the huddle going, uh, I'm sorry. He was going against Johnson there. Watch this. Uh, see, well, actually, they could have called that. They could have called that on Johnson. Taquiza Johnson. Okay. I'll let you say that. Good, good Owens. Owens. Yeah. Field goal is up and good. 
was a 20 yard field. You got that? You used a 20, I'm saying six. 23. Well, let's just say we all looked around and wondered where and what it was. And you say 22. I say 23. But the one thing we can say is it's worth three. <laughs> And that makes the score 48 to 19. And now time for our AutoZone Player of the Game. Yeah, let's go to our AutoZone Player of the Game. And is it any surprise? <laughs> no surprise here. Avion Black. Avion Black, a yard into the end zone. Bobbles the ball, gets some great blocks, runs down the sideline, cuts it back. And he's off and running with a little entourage, and then he ends it with a little signature <laughs> plunge. Today's player of the game has been brought to you by AutoZone. More than 2,700 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. So we still have eight minutes to go in this football game. We'll take a commercial break. When we come back, more football here on BET over Jackson State for Tennessee State. That'll make the folks awful happy. Can they do this? Uh, they've been doing it for years. Oh, okay. They can definitely do it. Okay, all right. <laughs> they can do that. All right. Again and again and again. <laughs> Tory Thigpen at the six. Let's see if Thigpen can make something happen. He's on the run. He's at the 35. Got one guy to beat and he'll finally be dragged down from behind. Good play by number 23, Michael Dirt, who not only runs the ball well, but comes back and makes a tackle because he, he it was gone. And he swooped on him. I mean, you got to look at this. This was great. I like how Thigpen, at the point of attack earlier in the game when he had to run back, he wasn't running this fast. He's actually running. He was moving there. Michael Dirt makes a nice tackle. Ball is marked at the 50-yard line. That return good for unofficially 42 yards. Unofficially, yeah. But I had to make sure, you know, <laughs> hey, I got guys all down my neck going, that you're wrong with those numbers. Got to get those numbers right. T.C. Taylor is going to hold on to the football. You now said you can, he can run the ball. Can run it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. As he carries the ball inside the 35-yard line, close to the 30. And that gain will be good for about 17 yards. Well, the fans are clearing out of here a little bit, trying to get a jump on the uh, traffic. But we still got the bands here jamming. Oh, they'll be here after the game. They may do a little battle with the bands. Which is always right a lot there. of fun. So the ball now is at the 32-yard line. First and 10 for T.C. Taylor. He's averaging 13 yards a carry. There we go. This is the time he decides to throw the football, and that's complete for a first down as he gets his receiver story wide open. Now, this is when you go with the no huddle, the hurry up offense, and you try to get some quick scores. Earlier in the game, I disagree with them going with the no huddle because it was ineffective. And plus, they stood so much, they took so much time on the line of scrimmage, making sure everybody had the play. Get in the huddle. Long story has caught three balls, 23 yards. Taylor lobs to his receiver. And that looked like that was I, also almost catchable. I tell you what. Morris. They are trying to, you know, they are trying to get Sylvester Morris in the end zone. It hasn't happened tonight. They're trying to get him in there. He's had some shots. They take some shots at him. He's caught seven passes for 93 yards. Yeah, but so he had a great day. He just hasn't been able to get inside. You ain't got an end zone. You ain't had a great day. They've kept him out of the end zone. Tennessee State's defense. Single setback. Second down. Ten. Taylor completes it to Story. We have Story now. Four catches on the day. 6:45. Clock continues to roll. This is this can be quite a blow for Jackson State as they try to 
to make a run for a national championship. Yeah, this is going to hurt them. I mean, this, this really sets them back. And next week, they take on Grambling, although that one will be back at home in Jackson. You wonder if the Tigers aren't watching this one, the Grambling State Tigers. They say, hey, wait a minute, man, we can get this team. Doug Williams, your former teammate. That's right. That's head right. Coach down there at Grambling right now. I might have to give uh, Doug the scouting report. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Doug is uh, Doug is doing well. Here's the remaining schedule for Jackson State, at least immediately. Grambling and it's Mississippi Valley State. Both of them will be at home. They'll be open on the second. Isn't that the weekend of the Circle City? Shh. <laughs> October 9th, and then they Alabama, have State. Alabama State, who Tennessee State beat up on last week. Fourth and one, TC plunges forward. Thomas Graham had a chance to stop him, but he slipped away from him and picked up the first down. How about Tennessee State? And their remaining schedule, Florida AM next week. And what a football game that is going to be, huh. folks. That is going to be something. That's at the Georgia Dome at 4 o'clock. Then they've got an open date themselves in Alabama A&M. And after Alabama and A&M, and then they get into their conference schedule. Touchdown. TC runs. TC Touchdown. scores. He's very slithery. I like this kid. I don't know how you know how effective he could be handling the offense from the, from the start, but he's a sophomore. He's getting some much needed time right here. So TC Taylor takes the football in for the touchdown and kind of made, made it look easy. Cuts into that lead of Tennessee State, but with just five minutes remaining in the game, not nearly enough time you would, you wouldn't think to get back yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, don't 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 count it all yeah, the way out. You are kidding. I mean, it's time for an onside kick after this. They're split, spreading three receivers out to the left of TC. Taylor, run it. Pressure. Taylor, ball deflected. And that ball is intercepted. And they're looking to bring it back. And you know, if he brings that thing back all the way, <laughs> you put six back on the board for Tennessee State. Interception was made by Cheney Price. Our score is 48 to 25. Things almost over here on BT. Taylor ran it in from eight yards out. So you figure it's the onside kick time now. Gregory kicks it downfield instead. And that'll drive back dirt. Dirt takes it at the one, looks to bounce to the outside, and almost found running room there were, like his predecessors. There were a couple of big hits being displayed right there. You know, when you're playing special teams, let's take a look at the touchdown by T.C. Uh, Taylor right here. Makes this look kind of easy. Slithers off of uh, would-be tacklers. They've actually outscored Tennessee State. But he's coming to the game 12 to 10 here in the fourth. Only by two points. That's not well, enough to know, make any. Absolutely. Not, yeah. not enough. And you would wonder whether Tennessee State is really putting in the same intensity that they had at the start of the game as well. They're looking at the scoreboard just like we are, and they see what we see. And, you know, of course you don't. Inside handoff. I tell you what, at, at the end of the game, I'm sorry for cutting you off. At the end of the game, you don't want to have to tackle Brantley. No. You just don't want to have to tackle him at the end of the game. You've been playing the whole game, you're tired, <laughs> and then you got to stop this big old guy. I'm telling you, it has him listed at 5'11, 225. He's bigger than that. It's preseason weight. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely a... Do you usually get bigger once the season starts, or do you get smaller once the season starts? In my first couple of years, I remember my first year in the league, I was 6'6", 235, 240 at the most, soaking wet. And by the end of the season, we had went to the Super Bowl that year, 
uh, played the Raiders in 1983. I, I took a picture standing next to the bus driver that was running us back and forth to the practices. You couldn't tell who was the football player and who was the bus driver. I'll tell you, I was skinny as I don't know what. You lose weight. Okay, okay. Um, you know, just it's hard to maintain your weight. In a game like this, those guys out there are losing 10 to 15 pounds of water weight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's easy to put that back during the course of the week. But a lot of times you don't. And right. for me, I wouldn't. And I would lose two or three each week. I couldn't recover it. And uh, it makes a difference at the end of the season, especially if you're slight built like I was. Well, here's Brentley on a third down and one, following Umar Rob's eight-yard run. He doesn't. He didn't get up. it. He didn't Brantley. get it. And you know why? It looked like he kind of hesitated at that offensive line instead of plowing through. Well, it like looked UCF. like somebody was at his feet. Okay. Somebody got smart. Watch this. There's a body down low. See, it's offensive lineman in his way. But the big old. Big old offensive lineman can't get out of the way, man. Big it, number 76. But Edward Reese did a good job of penetration. Yeah, big McAllister. Look that. how big that, look at that. Look at them love handles. <laughs> good grief. McAllister is 6'5", 320 on, on this program. I don't believe that either. So Tennessee State is forced to punt the football and... It'll roll down to the 30. 34 yard punt. 2.33 left. We'll have more after this. About all the places this guy has been Nebraska as an assistant coach, New Mexico State, Ball State, Kansas State, University of Wisconsin, University of Toledo. Morgan State defensive coordinator, then went to Cincinnati. I mean, that's he doesn't look that old. He doesn't look that old. To have put all that time in, huh? Good grief. But he has a lot of experience that he brings with, with him. All day to throw the ball. D.C. Taylor completes his pass. Nice poise in there for the sophomore. And nice boy. Stayed in the pocket, waited, and finds LaDerek Crossley. Very, very nice sitting in the pocket like that. Look how long he sits in there. He looks at like three receivers. That is very nice poise for a young kid. With some good reps for him late in the game like this. Oh. Taylor slips on the option there. By the way, you know, BET will be kicking off a new season on Monday. One of the shows to check out is live from L.A. It's hosted by comedian Michael Collier and Rachel Puffy and Lisa Ray. will stop by, check it out. That's 10 p.m. Eastern. And of course, we'll be back October 2nd for the Circle City Classic. Oh, yeah. And what a game that promises to be, Hampton against Southern. And before I go, I mean, if I can't give props to Serena Williams, huh. champion at the U.S. Open, who can I give props Go, go to? give her props. She's got it. Give her her props. Jackson State completed pass. That one goes to Cecil Forbes. You got to give Venus some props, too. Venus, Venus wore Hingis down now. You make she beat her down real good so Serena could take her out. Is that what it was? Yeah. Okay, so they double teamed on, That's right. on Hingis. I wonder if she's going to share any of that money. Uh, I'm sure a lot goes between the both of them. They're sisters. <laughs> okay. That's what happens. Well, let me say this. Pop's going to get his, too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Forbes after the catch and just looking for somebody to roll over. The clock continues to roll as we approach one minute left in this football game. And T.C. Taylor continues to drive this offense down the field. And he's going to keep throwing that football. Nice throw, seam route. Touchdown. Very nice. Jackson State. Very, very nice ball. Seam route right down the middle. Excellent. And you're not sure who it is as you look on the... On the depth chart, you're not sure whether it could be Jerry Mack or Jeremiah Liddell. I can't see the back of his, his jersey for his last name. Well, that's there's the back, get the, there's the back of his jersey. And you don't get the last name. So uh, there are several receivers, but none of them 81. <laughs> that's 
that's when. Uh, but it sure looked good. T.C. Taylor. Oh, nice. And another catch. play. And this one is good. Making the catch, Leroy Fields. So we do have an 84. <laughs> good job, Leroy. With 50 Very seconds nice catch. left here in the football game. And hey, they're only down by 15 points. That's only two, you know, a touchdown, two touchdowns and a, a two-point conversion. In 50 seconds. Yeah. Okay. You've seen weirder things happen. Look, look at the touchdown here. Seam pattern. Yes. Good vision by T.C. Taylor. Nice. How about the throw? I mean, he's laying the ball up. And this is the two-point conversion right here. This quarterback... Not taking anything away from Mark Washington, but uh, he seems to be in command of the offense right now. Brian Holloman was your defensive back on that play. You should get a look. TC. TC Taylor. Yeah. And there's the man who caught the two point conversion, Leroy Fields. That is just a few of the many people that were crowded in this place. I mean, this place was jam-packed. Oh, no question. Quarters. No question. And considering that we sit at the point of Mount Everest up here, I mean, we're <laughs> way up here, I can see Kentucky as far up as we are. Looks like the traffic has kind of thinned out a little bit. Pick it up. T.C. Taylor, he's the future here at Jackson State. Absolutely. Very Sophomore, happy young man. 6'4", 218. Nice young man. They say he could start for a whole lot of different teams. There are a lot of teams that could use a T.C. Taylor in the MEAC and the SWAC. Last oh. year, he completed 17 of 39 passes. Oh, they got it, and they're... Uh-oh, look out here, uh, onside on. kick. They get the onside kick. Look out. Six seconds left. Look out, hey. And I'm sitting here moving on, and Jackson State says, hey, George, don't count us out yet. Yeah, Thank Zach the Grady, Zach, Zach Grady. Who was supposed to see some time today at linebacker. We really haven't seen him on the defensive end, at least not early, but he does recover the onside kick. And yeah, that was make nice. He ride. could have scored on that play. Now, you know what? Okay, we have a this difference in the clocks. One says 45 seconds, and the other one says uh, 50. I believe it's 45 seconds. That at least took five seconds. And that was, of course, keyed by a, defense, a Jackson State player. Brian Reynolds. Making the hit on the receiver. Yeah. And that opened the ball up. Brian Reynolds made a, that was a very nice kick, onside kick there. Let's see if TC can put him in again. Trailing by 15. T again, great protection as you talked about. Lays it over the middle. Dangerous uh, pass right yeah, there. Yeah, that wasn't the best pass. But let me say this. Either he is semi-comatose when he's in the pocket, because he is not threatened by anything that's going around him, or else maybe he's a little deaf. There's bodies coming around him, guys flying around, and he holds up in that pocket. I it's hard to see a young guy like him have the poise that he has. Ball's located at the 45-yard line. Taylor on second and 10. This time, pressure catches up to him in the form of Walter Reese. Well, you know, sometimes when you have that great poise in there, you, you hold on too long. That was Thomas Graham Absolutely. with the sack. Tommy Graham came around from the end. Senior, 6'3", six, uh, six, 265. Working real hard today. You want to walk away with some kind of stat. <laughs> it's nice to get a sack before the game is over. So wait, what, what's this individual thing you're walking away with? You, it's a team thing. Well, it is a team thing, and when the team does well, the individuals do well. <laughs> I remember that we used to we used to get these nice little awards from the community, Joe oh, Gibbs would tell oh. us. When we'd win a game, he'd either give us a Monday off, so we'd already get the Tuesday off, so right, we'd get Monday right. and Tuesday off. Right. And you'd get to come up and you in front of your peers, you get these, you know, extra dollars oh, now, wait a minute. that the, the wives and girlfriends didn't know about. <laughs> no, I'm talking about in the pros. I'm talking about in the pros now. And they didn't well they know now you sit there talking. Get a little mad money. 
I sit back there with Dexter Manley and Dexter and I, man, we used to have a ball on those ends coming around the corner, knocking quarterbacks' heads off. Two did take Good old down. days. Good old Absolutely. days. Absolutely. Walked away with little jewelry. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I saw you the other day with that. Look at that ring you this got. This is a new one. This is a different That's one. This is a new one, okay. Yeah. Yeah, well. Those Super Bowl rings are huge. 39 seconds left, or at the 39 yard line, excuse me. T.C. Taylor completes his pass. And boy, if we don't find out who number 81 is, we're liable to get a touchdown from a guy. Larry Hollis, we've been told. There we go. There we go. Mr. Hollis. Larry Hollis, it is. Well, thanks very much for letting us know. We appreciate that. And Larry appreciates that. You aren't kidding. Larry Hollis. Okay. So Larry Hollis makes the reception. Eight seconds to go in the game. What do you do? <laughs> Down for, for 58, Wendell Williams. And yet I got a feeling that ball was caught first by a Jackson State player. Williams took it away from him. Wow. Wow. What a great ending <laughs> to an excellent ball game. L.C. Coles gets the win two years in a row. Huh. Very nice. There's the guy who got the interception. So, with this win, Tennessee State improves their record to 2-0 and on the season. Yes. Last week, knocking off Alabama State. This week, knocking off Jackson State. As for Jackson State, last week they beat Howard, but this week they lose to Tennessee State. So our final score is Tennessee State 48, Jackson State 33. For Charles Mann, I'm George Johnson saying good night, everybody. We look forward to seeing you October 2nd at the Circle City Classic.